Okay, so what are we ranking this time? Oh, okay. Finally, a cartoon I've been dying to talk about. Regular Show is a 2010 Cartoon Network show created by J.G. Quintel. This series follows the misadventures of a Blue Jay named Mordecai and a raccoon named Rigby. Alongside two other Cartoon Network shows, Adventure Time and the Amazing World of Gumball, this is a series I would watch constantly. I love the characters, I love the comedy, and I loved how crazy and surreal it could be, much like its competition. Honestly, I'm surprised there's never been a full-blown crossover between these three shows, a complete missed opportunity. I would kill to see that crossover happen over Family Guy and The Simpsons any day of the week. But enough about that. It's time for me to watch and rank every single episode of Regular Show. After smashing a hole in the wall, at first Mordecai and Rigby try to get money off of Benson by using this keyboard. But after seeing that it works, they just decide to do random crap with it. And after sending skips to the moon, they use this keyboard to go and rescue him. Usually the pilot is the weakest of the first season, but I think this episode still holds up today. You get multiple quotable lines in this one episode. Alright beef burrito, I'm gonna give you one more chance to take back what you said about my mom! Ham boning! Five, six, seven, eight! Give us a raise, loser! <laughs> good show! Jolly good show! Now clean up this mess or you're fired! The comedy is pretty funny. Hell, they even managed to sneak in some good adult jokes in here. Now, how in the H are we gonna fix this S? <laughs> Don't look at our crotches while we synchronize our watches! And I think that explains why my parents liked it so much. And hey, I think the characters are pretty good too. You have Mordecai, the Blue Jay, who is the more responsible one out of the duo, but sometimes he can get roped into Rigby's schemes. As for Rigby, the raccoon, the biggest slacker out of the duo, he's the one who usually doesn't want to do his work and he mostly just slacks off 96% of the time. The only real criticism I have is that the animation can look a little bit weird here and there, and I wish that they fleshed out the other characters a bit more. But hey, it's the first episode, so you gotta work with what you got. Right off the bat, I love this episode. The basic premise is that Mordecai and Rigby have to set up the chairs for this birthday party to prove to Benson that they're not slackers. But in traditional regular show fashion, the two end up slacking off when they play some arcade games. But after ignoring a note placed on one specific game, they release this thing called Destroyer of Worlds which almost destroys the entire park. So it's up to the slacker duo to try and stop it. Much like the last episode, it has some very quotable lines and beyond memorable scenes. Not setting up the chairs next time! Not setting up the chairs next time! Ugh. And in this episode, I think the characters are a little bit more fleshed out here than they were in the last episode. We have Benson, who's the boss of the park. We have Skips, who's a kind of know-it-all character. You've got Pops, who's a weird but endearing character. And you've got Muscle Man and High Five Ghost. I'll talk about them later. And hey, we even get a nice cameo from Berlizzi himself. And we even get more out of the duo of themselves. In this episode, it really goes to show how dedicated Mordecai is. Even when the Destroyer of Worlds was almost on the verge of killing him, he still wanted to set up the chairs to prove to Benson that he's not a slacker. And when it comes to Rigby, yeah, they show how much of a slacker he is in this episode. But when it comes to his best friend being in danger, he steps up to the plate. With the power of button mashing. Oh my god! Button mashing never works! In what game does mashing buttons work? Yes it does Berlin, stop being a hater. But I also think the action in this one is pretty good as well. But I like the message more importantly. The message is, button mashing always works. Told you I got skills. Okay. Okay, so originally Rigby wanted to go see this fist bump concert. The reason why I'm not saying Mordecai is because Mordecai originally didn't want to go. The reason why he wants to go now is because, oh for the love of god. Okay, so this is where Mordecai starts behaving like a simp. Oh dear god. 
Besides, everyone is going to be there. It's going to be fun. Are you guys going to go? I'm totally going to go. Oh, so now you're going to... Ow! Okay, so Mordecai and Rigby decided to work overtime so that they could get the tickets to the Fist Bump concert. But in order to power through these chores, they drink coffee. Then eventually this coffee bean thing comes out of nowhere and takes the tickets from them because they're hardcore fist pump fans too. This is another episode like the previous two that has some pretty funny jokes. And overall, it's a pretty entertaining time. And because of this episode, I started drinking coffee. And I haven't stopped since. Rigby wants to learn Death Kwon Do so that he can beat Mordecai at Punchies and, get this, so he can be player 1 in this video game. Sure, it's rather basic with Rigby learning Death Kwon Do and as a result he becomes drunk with power, but it's understandable. Especially when they show flashbacks that show him getting his ass whooped by every single character, even Pops. But the person he wants to get revenge on the most is Mordecai. As is shown in these flashbacks, he's beaten him at everything, and... <laughs> We get this funny moment, just watch. Still makes me laugh to date. So yeah, Rigby is understandable. You don't agree with him, but you understand his point of view. Another episode that I think is pretty good. After Rigby finds a plate in the trash can, <laughs> it's funny because he's a raccoon. Mordecai and Rigby try to find some cake so they can put it on the plate. Aren't you guys going to wash it first? Okay, I guess not. And because they're broke, they decide to use Skips' upcoming birthday as an excuse to throw a party and eat some chocolate cake that's at the snack bar. I think this is another funny episode too. And they introduce two new characters, Gary and the Guardians of Eternal Youth. And I would say this episode is a little bit darker compared to the previous episodes because we see Skips' the decaying corpse and we even see a skull Ugh. i think this episode is pretty good it gives us a little sneak peek into skips's background by showing that this man is immortal but i still find it being pretty good nonetheless for this episode mordecai and rigby are tasked with watching over the grill because rigby doesn't follow instructions by benson he ends up burning those special hot dogs that he ordered this results in the two going to the meat locker to find some meat only for them to get locked in there. And then Rigby finds these hot dogs that are alive, and then eventually these hot dogs decide to eat Mordecai and the rest of the crew. I think this episode truly goes to show how shitty Rigby is in the earlier seasons, like seriously. He's, he's kind of unbearable in these earlier episodes. He reminds me of Blue from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. And this episode shows him doing stupid stuff and making the situation worse for him and Mordecai. As for the episode itself, it's fine. Some of these jokes weren't that funny, but it's fine. It's not one of my personal favorites, and it's certainly not bad by any means. Quick, go buy some more hot dogs from the store and make sure they're regular. And that's the show! Oh, we're dealing with another lying episode, huh? Well, unlike the last episode, this one has a better set of jokes. So for this episode, Mordecai and Rigby are forced to go to Cheezers because they ate Benson's grilled cheese. This isn't your sandwich. This is our sandwich. This is your sandwich, huh? Then how come it says Benson on the bag? Huh? It's supposed to say Rigby, but they misspelled my name wrong. Stop lying! So while they're there, the two decide to have a contest to see who's a better liar. This results in them hanging out with astronauts. I will admit that the episode does teach a much more solid lesson about how it's not okay to lie, and I will admit that this episode is better than the last, but I still don't think it's right up there with previous regular show episodes. We're constantly dealing with a scenario where a character lies and lies and lies until eventually everything gets out of hand to the point where they need to confess. We're not astronauts. <laughs> If you ever lie about being astronauts again, you're dead! We saved the city, Astro! But then again, I think it's fine. Better than the last episode, that's for sure. Probably the weakest episode in the season, Mordecai buys this new cologne in order to get Margaret's attention. 
You don't even know her. But he ends up attracting the attention of unicorns, which are douchebags in this episode. The problem with this episode is that it's not that funny, the adult jokes aren't cleverly written as they were in previous episodes, the unicorns are annoying, Mordecai is a simp, and Rigby's an asshole. And it's funny how Rigby's attitude towards these guys changes dramatically. At one point he likes their company and he even disses Mordecai, but at another point he immediately gets mad at them for wrecking his bed. Overall, it's without a doubt the weakest episode of season 1. And sometimes I forget its very existence. You two morons had better get this mess cleaned up or you'll wish it was you driving that car! The unicorn one? Ah! Oh! Mordecai and Rigby start prank calling people after watching the master prank caller. But when they try to prank call the master himself, they end up getting sent to the 80s. I think this is another fun episode, especially with the duo ending up in the 1980s. It's a pretty fun time. The park is getting audited, so this results in them turning to Don, Rigby's brother, which pisses off Rigby to no end. He's so salty, he won't even give his brother sugar. Not only does this episode give us a little look into Rigby's toddler years, showing that Don really did overshadow him, but we also discover that apparently, Rigby is the older brother, not Don. Not only do we get some nice moments in this episode, like Mordecai telling Rigby that he sees him as his brother, along with Rigby finally coming around to accepting his brother, but also, this episode is relatable for those who have older siblings, or younger siblings for that matter. So yeah, I think this episode's pretty great. Mordecai and Rigby are forced to work at the snack bar because of Rigby, but after being told that the snacks are free, they start stuffing their faces. But after eating too much, Mordecai eats a salad while Rigby continues to keep eating more junk food, and as a result of this, his body ends up ditching him. Holy shit. But Rigby's pretty content with it, because he doesn't want to admit the fact that he's wrong. It gives a nice lesson that you shouldn't stuff your face with junk food all the time and it's pretty nice to eat healthy food every now and then. And that's why I have so much respect for this episode. And besides that, this episode has some pretty meme worthy moments. We tried it the nice way, now we do it the skips way. Dude, how do you feel? And another message is that it's okay to admit when you're wrong. Future YouTubers, take notes. So yeah, another great episode. God, we've been getting nothing but bangers in this one. Mordecai and Rigby are forced to make a band because Mordecai just keeps on simping. Boy, you're making a big mistake. So when they try to form a band, they end up doing some crazy shit which results in their future selves coming back to the present to teach them how to play. What a badass season finale. Not only do we get this badass song, but it also teaches a valuable lesson that sometimes cheating your way to the top isn't worth it, because then you're just a no good fraud. So overall, I think this season was a pretty good one. We only had one bad episode, the rest were pretty good. Now let's continue on to season 2 to see if it keeps picking up the slack. Rigby ends up being scared of a British taxi after watching Hello Governor. So this leads Mordecai to try to help him get over his fears. I think this episode teaches a valuable lesson of facing your fears and not letting it get the best of you. And I relate to this episode because I have a fear of clowns. And I don't want to hear any of you guys laughing in the comments. If you saw a face like this, would you not freak the fuck out? Yeah, that's what I thought so. Anyway, I think it's a great episode that teaches a good lesson about overcoming your fears. Mordecai ditches hanging out with Rigby to go see his zombie dinner party in order to ask Margaret to go to the movies with him. I feel like they took the premise of that Unicorns episode where because Mordecai ditches hanging out with Rigby, he decides to be bitter towards him. But except this one is a little bit better. 
So for this episode, they paint both characters in a negative light. Rigby for being a selfish asshole who doesn't let his best friend hang out with Margaret, even though after watching the entire series, I guess he was doing Mordecai a favor. And as for Mordecai, he ends up getting so jealous of Rigby to the point where he ends up killing him. And while I appreciate at the ending it calls out Mordecai for being so bitterly jealous towards Rigby, they don't really call out Rigby's dickishness at any point in the episode. I'll kill you! Oh, shit. Well, I guess that's good enough, I guess. And this episode teaches a valuable lesson. Don't let your bitter jealousy ruin your friendship. And more importantly, don't simp over a girl. I, I, don't, don't do it. Don't, I, don't do it. I don't care how attractive she is. D don't, don't do it. Because I know one of you bastards would do the same thing to your friend if you were in Mordecai's shoes. Mordecai and Rigby want to get appreciation plaques, but according to Benson's book, all the two do is mess up and slack off 96% of the time. And after watching 15 episodes, yeah, he's right. So Mordecai and Rigby decide to alter the Book of Park records in order to make themselves look good. But things start to take a turn when the stuff they write in the book actually comes true in reality. Can't be taught? Untrustworthy? Useless? Destruction of Park property? Oh, so that's what they were referencing. <laughs> They're the most reliable guys I've ever met. Oh, I trust them with my own life. Eh, give it a couple seasons. In all honesty, it's a pretty average episode. I mean, it teaches a nice moral of if you want to get to the top, you gotta work your ass off to get there. There are no shortcuts to it. But I will admit that the final battle with the snow monster is pretty cool. Oh, god damn. But at the same time, it's a rather pretty average episode. Because of Mordecai and Rigby constantly slacking off, Benson decides to use this thing called Peeps. It's a surveillance system he uses to track their every movement. I'm surprised he didn't use this on them before. This episode did remind me a lot of the first season where, because of these two dumbasses acting like dumbasses, some supernatural villain comes out of nowhere to either take care of them or kill them. And unlike other examples from season 3, I think Benson is pretty well written here. Because it's completely understandable. Mordecai and Rigby are constantly slacking off, doing the constant staring contest instead of doing their work. And I will admit that the ending is so entertaining. Seeing the big eye and Mordecai have a staring contest, it's brutal as hell. Like, my god. <laughs> but I think this episode is way better than the last one. Pops has a fear of stage fright. Or is it glossophobia? Jesus, why does everything gonna have a phobia at the end of it? My god. So Mordecai and Rigby try to help him overcome that fear. It's a pretty relatable episode for people that have fears of large crowds. And not to mention, there are some pretty goddamn hilarious moments in here. Oh no, what are you doing? Get away from him! Rigby! Sorry, it's a nervous habit. You guys were taking forever. So yeah, I think this is another good episode. Way better than the previous two combined. After funking up a job, Mordecai and Rigby are left under the supervision of... Muscle Man and High Five Ghost. While High Five Ghost isn't all that bad, I dislike Muscle Man. He is without a doubt my least favorite character in this show. The worst part about this guy is that he slacks off way more than Mordecai and Rigby, and he pretty much gets away unscathed and he gets praised by Benson all the time. Oh, right, back to the episode. So basically, it's just Muscle Man telling the same my mom joke over and over and over again until Mordecai insults his mom out of frustration, and then some crazy shit happens. He ends up pulling a picture of what looks to be his mom, but instead it's his butt. Ha 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 Not funny, it sucks. Moving on. Mordecai and Rigby want more respect, so they decide to play an arcade game called Broken Bones, and the better they get, the more respect they get. I think this episode is pretty goddamn great, especially with its message on respect. And apparently this episode was referencing a man called Billy Mitchell, a man who's known for having the highest score in Pac-Man. 
And from what I've heard from people, this episode eventually led to Cartoon Network getting sued. I don't know the full details, so you're going to have to look into it yourself. But overall, I think it's without a doubt a great episode. Mordecai and Rigby finally reach the final boss of this game they're playing. And randomly, this game doesn't have a name, unlike Strong Johns or Dig Champs. Why do I care about that? Anyway, moving on. So, just when they're about to beat the boss, their TV doesn't show any picture. So they have to find a new one so that they can finish the hammer. This episode is so relatable for any gamers out there. Because, don't lie, there's been moments in your childhoods where you guys have been playing a game for hours and hours and hours to get to the final battle. And you're determined to kick the final boss's ass because you just, you, you can't stop there. You gotta, you gotta keep pushing through to the end. And not to mention, the final battle alone is awesome. We have the hammer come to life and he starts kicking the shit out of everybody. But then they start using every piece of furniture to take him out because that's his weakness. I wonder how much money they're going to have to pay in order to replace every single piece of furniture they just destroyed in that house. But whatever, who cares about that? This episode is among the greatest. We, we gonna, gonna party. party! Got some chips, got some dips. Some call me cheap, bit of a free loader, but I bought cups for that old school soda. I don't mean to brag, I don't mean to boast, but here's some hummus for these mini toes. You're telling me you jackasses can spend this much money on getting stuff for your party, but you can't spend a buck fifty for cake mix? Actually, yeah, that is pretty expensive. Never mind. After finding old school soda in the attic, Mordecai and Rigby decide that they're gonna throw a party. Your parties suck! I was at the last one, and there weren't even any chicks! Don't you have a girlfriend or something like that? Like, what the fuck? I like how Skips is just cool with it, like, whatever, it should be fun. But to get their party started, they end up inviting a man called Party Pete, who ends up making Mordecai and Rigby's party go through the roof. Hey look, it's Rick from Rick and Morty! I will admit that the colors are pretty bright in this one. And the way Party Pete dies is pretty messed up, even for 2011 standards. But overall, this episode falls into the okay pile for me. It doesn't do anything off the wall, but it's still pretty enjoyable. The most important thing I remember from this episode was that this was Eileen's debut episode. As for the episode itself, it's not really that funny and it's probably the weakest episode of season 2. So Mordecai ends up seeing Pops naked. Wonderful. And as a result of this, everywhere he looks and turns, he just sees naked Pops. So Rigby tries to help him out, despite the fact that this was his fault to begin with. I mean, I like how they make fun of anime with this cartoon that the guy is watching. But this episode, for the most part, was just pretty uncomfortable to me. It's not that funny, and I'm pretty sure this caused a lot of traumatic experiences for some kids out there. And I get the point of the episode is that it's meant to be relatable for some people, but personally, it wasn't relatable for me. Snacks disappearing from the snack bar, holes in the walls, $500 worth of prank phone calls, it's ridiculous! Finally, they're making callbacks to episodes I actually remember. Because of all the crazy shit Mordecai and Rigby put Benson through, he ends up being demoted and replaced with this woman named Susan. Bummed out about his demotion, Mordecai and Rigby try to show Benson the wonders of being at their level. Huh, now I see where Spongebob Your Fire got the idea from. I like this episode because we get to see Benson act like Mordecai and Rigby. Hell, there's even a moment where he tells Susan off right before he gets fired. And it's not just that, we even get to see the three bond while they're slacking off, and that's pretty refreshing to see i actually did like that and we actually see benson develop more as a character as when he starts to become a slacker he feels more at peace with himself which is something i did like but he does ultimately learn that it's better to have a job than be a slacker all the time or else you're gonna end up like this guy hey and he made the right choice because susan was working the park crew so hard that she had them transform into her and when things don't go her way she turns into godzilla I think this episode's pretty good. It gives Benson some good character development, and we see Benson, Mordecai, and Rigby bond, which is something that is pretty goddamn awesome. I'm not gonna lie, that, 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 that is amazing right there. 
Seeing these two bond, it's almost unheard of. Mordecai and Rigby tried to get a refund for this actual role-playing game they purchased, but when the guy doesn't want to give them a refund, they decide to expose the game's flaws in order for people to avoid purchasing it. As for the episode itself, I say it's a thoroughly enjoyable episode, especially in its third act where the guy uses his imagination to stop Mordecai and Rigby at every turn. And I will admit that the twist at the end is pretty brutal. The guy almost dies from having a ruler stuck in his chest. Jesus. And I want to ask you guys a quick question. Guess how much money they spent on this crap? Seven dollars. Good thing it was worth it. Seven bones, baby. Seven dollars? We almost died for seven dollars? The numbers aren't important. It was the principal. Well, it looks like with these bus tickets, we spent about $87 getting our money back from Mel Gibson. But I think it's the principle of the thing that matters. Woo, oil cool. What can I say? This episode's outstanding. I just want to let you guys know, I've had this song stuck in my head for a solid month when I was little. Mordecai and Rigby end up finding a tape that contains this song they used to listen to back in junior high. Yeah, just for like that one summer in junior high, and then I realized how lame it was. <laughs> Trust me, brother. I know exactly what you mean. After listening to the song, Rigby ends up singing the song nonstop, so now Mordecai has to help him get over it. This is another episode that anybody, kids and adults, can relate to. I'm pretty sure we've all had at least that one song that's been stuck in our heads to the point where we would sing it out loud. Or there was that one song that's been everywhere to the point where you couldn't escape it. I would play some music as an example, but uh, the Content ID system is a real pain in the ass, so I'll just leave a little list right here. So after he gets the song out of his head, quite literally, it manifests itself into a physical form. As Mordecai says, Dude, calm down. It's not a ghost, it's just music. You can't touch music, but music can touch you. Oh, barf. I'm telling you, I relate to this episode so heavily because back in 2014, Let It Go was everywhere. I feel exactly like Mordecai and Rigby in this montage. And then eventually we get to the ending where it ends on a badass final note. And then it's revealed that Benson is a drummer, which is pretty cool. I'm sure we'll delve into that a little later on into the series, but as it stands, it's easily one of the greatest episodes in the entire series. Oh god, I hate this episode. So Muscle Man ends up getting dumped by Starla. This sucks for Mordecai and Rigby because now they have to do his work. So they decide to talk to Starla, and she takes an immediate interest in Mordecai, resulting in the two dating. Oh god. He ends up breaking up with her, and she goes Hulk smash. And then finally, Muscle Man and her get back together at the end of the episode. Is it already bad enough that I don't like Muscle Man, but now we have to center this episode around his girlfriend? Why? Why did you do this? Why did you do this, JG Quintel? Why? And I don't mean to sound like an asshole, but the female characters of regular show, apart from Eileen, are pretty bland. And out of all the females in the show, Starla is among the absolute worst. And every episode centered around her is just terrible. And this is no exception. And ultimately, everything in this episode is a complete waste of time because we know these two are just going to end up together at the end of the episode. If this episode taught me anything, is that it's best to stay single, especially if a woman acts like this after you break up with them. Rigby hires somebody to do all of his work, but what he doesn't know is that this person is a total doppelganger, and throughout the episode, he starts to take on Rigby's appearance. Yeah, it's just one of those clone the main character kind of episodes. Rigby is even more lazier than usual, and I will admit that the episode is not really mean-spirited, but it certainly isn't outstanding like the other episodes were. Rigby ends up getting jinxed, and because of this, he can't say anything, or else... You know how this works, man. You can't talk when you're jinxed, and if you talk, you're gonna get punched. So keep your mouth shut. Fine. <laughs> I say this episode's pretty satisfying, especially after his annoying betrayal in the last episode. 
Some people may say it's pretty mean-spirited, but given the fact that this is Rigby we're talking about, a character that's gone away with so much terrible stuff, I say it's pretty cathartic. And given the fact that he acts like a dick later on in the season, it makes me appreciate this episode a little bit more. Oh my fucking god, another Muscle Man episode? So Muscle Man is having a birthday party for High Five Ghost. And Mordecai and Rigby aren't invited, so they try their damnedest to get in anyway. The biggest problem with this episode is that Muscle Man is such a little bitch in this episode, being so petty towards Mordecai and Rigby that he pulls this elaborate prank on them, all because they accidentally spilled soda on him. The first time they did it, it's inconsequential because Rigby was choking, even though we know deep down this man won't die, because even when he does die, he gets resurrected, so uh, yeah, anyway, putting that aside. The second time it happened, it was an accident because Rigby tripped on a soda can, and instead of being calm and understanding that both those times were an accident, no, he acts like a little bitch, such as lashing out at the two when they try apologizing to him, and even pretending like he's gonna destroy their game console. I don't know about you, but to me, that's a low blow. You don't mess with another person's game console. Like seriously, do you not know how much those fucking things cost? So yeah, I don't like this episode. I mean, sure, Mordecai and Rigby turning into ghosts was kind of cool. Kind of? But it doesn't change the fact that even at the last minute of the episode, he pulls a prank on them still. This episode blows. Oh my god, two bad episodes back to back. Wonderful. Mordecai and Rigby keep abusing solids for minuscule things, but then it starts to go somewhere when Eileen wants to go on a date with Rigby. And Mordecai, being the simp that he is, uses this as an opportunity to go on a date with Margaret. And instead of him being cool with it, Rigby decides to use 10 whole solids in order to get through. And all of his solids amount to embarrassing the shit out of Mordecai. The biggest problem with this episode is that Rigby is just a dick. That's it. He's not funny and he's unbearable. And so is Mordecai for being this much of a simp to go after a girl he doesn't even know. <sighs> but back onto Rigby. He's always been a dick as previous episodes have shown, but this is just a brand new low. Having his best friend embarrass himself in front of literally everybody in the final act is just terrible. And I've already mentioned this, but using 10 solids just to embarrass your best friend is just a dick move. And we witness Mordecai doing these embarrassing deeds because he's a goddamn simp. Like, oh my god, neither one of them is likable in this episode. And that's not good. And as for Rigby, he gets absolutely no punishment for his actions in this episode. He recorded Mordecai doing the embarrassing deed, and then when Mordecai rightfully says he doesn't want to hang out with him anymore, he just breaks it and they call it even. No, I'm sorry, no. If your so-called best friend does that shit to you, you have every right to break off the friendship. What can I say? It's a trash episode. Moving on. The park is broke. Wait a second, if it's broke, then how did they manage to replace every piece of furniture? <sighs> Whatever. So they come up with a plan to make more money. So Mordecai and Rigby decide to host a scary movie night at the abandoned cemetery in the park. Another fantastic episode. Before we had Terror Tales of the Park, which was basically Treehouse of Horror, we had this episode. And it does a good job of being terrifying and entertaining. And it has some pretty graphic moments for a Cartoon Network show. An entertaining episode that I think stands pretty strong. Mordecai, Rigby, and Pops were going to go to a wrestling event. Think of it like WWE. But after an accident resulting in Pops getting injured, the three are forbidden to go. And in traditional regular show fashion, Mordecai and Rigby go against Benson's orders and go anyway. And <laughs> so does Pops. And when he gets there, he's mistaken for a wrestler. So Mordecai and Rigby try to get him out of there. But they have to fight the other wrestlers because they don't take too kindly to those saying that wrestling is fake. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this isn't fake. I'm not that much of a fan of wrestling, but even I managed to get some enjoyment out of this episode. And we even discovered that Pops was a wrestler back in his old days. 
and I will admit that seeing Pops take down these high class wrestlers is just hilarious to me. And I'm so glad they don't make an episode on the actual wrestler Huge Head trying to take over Pops' life. Not that it would be bad, but it would just be too obvious and predictable. But as this episode stands, it is a thoroughly entertaining watch. Rigby beats Skips at wrestling. This makes Skips think that he's weak, so he keeps demanding an arm wrestle with Rigby at every given opportunity. And after discovering that Rigby cheated using Playco Arm Boy, he kills him as a result. Damn! Before YouTube prank stars were getting killed for the sake of a joke, Rigby set up the stage for them. Holy shit! So in order to get Rigby's soul back, Skips ends up arm wrestling death. Finally, Rigby gets a sense of repercussions for his shitty behavior. And while some people will dismiss it saying, oh, Rigby was just playing around. But here's a problem with that. His smug attitude. And it turns out that this isn't the first time this happened either. In Death Punchies, it's shown that Skips put him in the hospital the first time. Holy shit, this man is so powerful, he can set this little rat to the hospital. My god. And I will admit that the arm wrestle sequence between Skips and Death is pretty cool, especially with how the animation is presented. I think this is a pretty good episode that presented some pretty good karma on a pretty shitty character. Mordecai Rigby, Muscle Man, and High Five Ghost work together to win a car from this contest, but the host creator has some other plans as he has the four turn against each other and has them cryogenically frozen for the next 2,000 years. So the four must work together in order to get back to the present. I will admit that the four do well together in this episode, and surprisingly enough, Muscle Man isn't unbearable to deal with like how he is in previous episodes, but it still has a case of predictability. But I thought the ending had a pretty funny zinger. And if it does work that way, we could always just fight to the death with each of our copies. <laughs> yeah. Mordecai and Rigby find a bunch of baby ducks in the fountain that they were supposed to be cleaning. And while they find a new home for them, they discover that these ducks are pretty goddamn awesome. Like seriously, look at some of the stuff they can do. Hell, they're so goddamn cool they come back in later episodes. I will admit that Rigby disliking them one minute and then immediately liking them is rather fast, but eh, what can you do? And then we see these four work together and turn into a... You know what? I don't even know what that is, but I don't care because it looks pretty goddamn cool. Rigby constantly gets belittled and made fun of for not having a high school diploma, so he decides to drink this thing called Brain Max. It makes him smart as a result, but because he doesn't like the idea of his best friend being smarter than him, Mordecai drinks some too, and this results in a debate between the two of who's the smartest. I'll just let this do the talking. Quorum he, Vitio Morianus! Morianus? Morianus Vestris Incipiat Rem Totem! Et harem facere deberet ere stultum! I think this episode is pretty good. It has a nice message attached to it, and I've always wondered, is this gibberish, or is this an actual language? Tell me in the comment section below. But I will admit, it is a little mean-spirited having Mordecai constantly make fun of Rigby for not having a high school diploma. Which is something I don't think people would ever do. You shouldn't make fun of somebody just because they didn't finish college or high school. It's kind of a dick move. This whole episode is basically the pilot episode. And honestly, if you ask me, I feel like they should have done this episode first rather than the power. But the basic plot is that this is Mordecai and Rigby's first day working at the park. And the second they get there, they start fighting over a couch that Pops was going to throw away. So they decide to play rock, paper, scissors. But each and every single time, they end up getting tied. As a pilot episode, I say it does a better job of introducing us to the characters than the power did. And if there's one thing I will admit is that the animation here is a lot more expressive. More specifically on Pops. And I will admit that the final confrontation where the black hole tries to suck the entire park up because they tied 99 times is pretty crazy. As pilots go, it's pretty decent. It's not that crazy like the power. It's just, it's decent. I just have one question though. 
Why didn't Benson fire them on the spot right then and there? If this was the first time random crap like this happened, he should have fired them on the spot. If they did this, the whole show would be over. Actually, yeah, that is the problem. Never mind. Okay, so Mordecai and Rigby make a bet with Muscle Man and High Five Ghost to see who can get the most views on their internet videos. I don't know, I've never really been a big fan of shows doing this. I mean, it's fine, it's just not my kind of thing. But I will admit that some of the ideas in here are pretty good. Rigby ends up getting sprayed by a were skunk, so throughout the entire episode he tries to find a way to get the stink off. This is one of those rare episodes where I actually do feel bad for Rigby, because in this episode specifically he doesn't really do anything wrong, other than just wanting to get this bingo card filled so he doesn't have to do it anymore. And we actually get a nice moment where he realizes how much of a jerk he's been at the coffee shop. That was pretty nice. And I like how Mordecai tries to help his best friend throughout the entire episode, like he did with This Is My Jam. It goes to show that, while they can't argue and fight all the time, they still look out for each other at the end of the day. Mordecai and Rigby try to destroy a promo tape. The reason why is because this tape has them shit-talking everybody in the park except for Muscle Man and High Five Ghost for some bizarre reason. And they stop at nothing to get it because the park crew is going to the karaoke place they went to. And they have to make sure that they don't see it or else they're going to hate them forever. I thought this episode was pretty funny, especially when you see these two's reaction to their own performance. And the third act itself was just freaking hilarious with everybody brawling out with each other. I think it's a pretty good episode. Time, you know what that means Gonna head out to the beach Gonna do some beachy things It's summertime Feels just right Gonna gather all my friends And we'll party through the night Summertime night. Benson ends up throwing away a stick hockey game That Mordecai and Rigby took a liking to So this results in the two Trying to track it down So they can get it back I think this episode does a good job of giving us a little look into Benson's past and it shows why he's so against the idea of Mordecai and Rigby playing stick hockey. And this won't be the first time that the show does this. We have an awesome final battle that shows this man going all out and overall I think this is one of the better Benson episodes compared to the other two. We'll get into them later, don't you worry. As it stands, I think it's a pretty good episode. Mordecai and Rigby place a wager that if one of them loses at this game, they have to get their character's haircut for a week. Of course, dude. I'd never back out of a bet. But you'd back out of a solid, though. So Mordecai ends up going blonde, and as a result, he ends up joining this club of blondes. Eventually, Rigby starts to regret cheating on this bet, so he tries to come clean before Mordecai becomes an official member of the blondes. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed that they actually made Rigby feel regretful for what he did to Mordecai. You know, unlike his performance in Do Me A Solid. Even though on Mordecai's part, he was only going along with the blondes in order to teach Rigby a lesson. And I like how they actually teach Rigby a lesson in this episode instead of allowing him to get away with being a dick. Other than that, I think this episode is another good one, like the first episode. Karaoke's lame. We should do something really fun, like bowling. Yeah, bowling's good. Huh, I didn't think they'd actually make a full-blown episode on that line from the karaoke episode. The Park Strikers make it to the championship, and they're going against the Magical Elements. And, shocker, it's run by death. And knowing the fact that Skips is the best player on the team, he threatens him that he will tell Mordecai, Benson, and Rigby about his secret if he doesn't back down. The episode is pretty basic with the whole blackmail routine going on, but this episode does tell us that Skips' real name is Walks, and we don't actually find out about that backstory until Season 5. Just damn, why do we have to wait that long? But as a whole, I think this episode's pretty good. So, this is the season that started it all, Terror Tales of the Park. Which is basically this show's equivalent to Treehouse of Horror from The Simpsons. And much like The Simpsons, they break up their stories into segments. So here we go. So the first segment starts with Pops dealing with an evil doll that constantly wants to draw on his face. 
This is an obvious parody of Chucky from the Child's Play franchise. The second segment follows Muscle Man and High Five Ghost trying to drive an RV they found into the crash pit, but then a bunch of ghosts who are revealed to be a metal rock band from the 1980s known as Skull Punch hijack the ride. So it's up to Muscle Man to try to get them to the crash pit and also make sure he doesn't die in the process. It's weaker than the last one to be honest, if only those two fuckers died in real time. And for the last segment, Mordecai and Rigby go trick-or-treating. Aren't you guys like 23 years old? What the fuck are you guys doing trick-or-treating? Anyway, Rigby decides to egg someone's house for not giving him candy. And then he slowly starts to discover that he's been cursed. Up until eventually, he turns into a giant house. <laughs> I gotta say, the deaths in this one are pretty graphic. Like, Jesus Christ. Such as ripping Muscle Man's skin off, making a barbecue out of skips, and cutting Mordecai's head off. My god. Honestly, this is the best segment out of all of them. So how does it stand? I say the first Terror Tales of the Park is pretty good. Not outstanding like Treehouse of Horror, but it's still pretty good, nevertheless. Mordecai invites Margaret and Eileen to go camping with him and Rigby. You might be wondering why didn't I say Rigby too? Well, because Rigby didn't want them to go. Don't be a dick, Rigby. And while they're chilling out, eventually there's this creature that tries to attack them because he hates tourists. I think it's a pretty chill, laid-back kind of episode. We see Mordecai, Margaret, Rigby, and Eileen just hanging out, and I thought it was pretty good. And hell, they even give us something to know about Margaret other than she works at the coffee shop. Apparently, she's a college student, and... That's about it, really. I mean, granted, the final battle is pretty cool, but it's a run-of-the-mill episode. But it's one that I won't judge harshly, because I actually enjoyed it. So, randomly out of nowhere, Margaret asks Mordecai to make her website. You simpin' bitch. Did I not make myself clear? What? You're not even using it! I'm waiting for an email from this hottie I met online yesterday. What about Starla, though? You know, that psychopathic twat that almost killed Mordecai and Rigby? Anyway, Mordecai can't use the computer because Muscle Man keeps using it, even though he's playing basketball. So, they decide to challenge him at a basketball game, and randomly out of nowhere, Mordecai and Rigby both suck at it. Okay, Rigby I can understand because he's a lazy fuck, but Mordecai seems to know the fundamentals of basketball back in Season 2. But whatever. This guy with a basketball for a head comes down to give these guys some skill. And then this leads into one of the best basketball playoffs I have ever seen in my goddamn life. Seriously, the animation in this one goes so hard even though it doesn't need to. It's outstanding. But the one downside is... Oh, my website? That was two months ago, but it's okay, Eileen finished it for me. This episode made me get into basketball when I was younger. Not anymore because, you know, I don't want to do basketball anymore after the events of Space Jam 2. And then, just when it seemed like we turned a corner, Space Jam 2 came out. And we all just kind of gave up. After Mordecai and Rigby wrecked the car, Benson ends up giving them bikes instead. After a bickering match, Mordecai and Rigby make a bet with Benson that if they can prove that they're cool with these bikes, they can get the cart back. You're all like, that'll never happen. And then we'll get all cool and you'll be all like, whoa, and then we'll be all like, in your face. <laughs> and then I'll be all like. When I was younger, I totally thought Mordecai and Rigby were cool, especially with these dope ass outfits they were wearing. But now that I'm older, yeah, these guys are kind of losers, <laughs> but they're cool losers. And I like the moral here. You shouldn't give a shit about what anybody thinks about your personality or the clothes you wear. Because I'm pretty sure there are kids out there that care so much about what their peers say that they do stupid shit in order to get their approval. Now, I just want to tell you kids, you shouldn't give a shit about what other people have to say about you unless they're your parents or authority figures. Also, I find it hilarious that these guys get arrested just because they're too cool. But hey, it leads to a nice moment where Benson admits that, yeah, Mordecai and Rigby are pretty cool. So as the episode stands, I think it's pretty cool. Benson makes a book of rules for the house. 
Mordecai and Rigby begrudgingly look through it, and they see one rule that pisses them off to no end. No video games? Are you nuts? Rule number 47, no yelling. Oh boy, I can't wait to see that episode come into play. Frustrated with the constant rules, Mordecai and Rigby decide to leave the house, and then they end up going to a place where there are no rules. It teaches a solid lesson that sometimes having rules is really for the best, because think about it, if there were no laws in this world, society would be a scary fucking place to live in. Also, there's a weird moment in the episode where there's an older version of Mordecai, which always confused me as a kid, and even now I'm still confused by it. But with that aside, I think this episode's pretty goddamn solid. After getting dissed by a rapping group, Mordecai and Rigby try to help Pops become a better rapper. If I'm truly honest, it's probably one of the more stale episodes for me. I don't really hate this episode, it just wasn't really all that interesting. I mean, the ending of the episode was pretty nice, but honestly, it's just a case where this episode falls into the forgettable pile for me. Mordecai and Rigby think that they can get a girl's number just by cruising in a nice car, and they have to get this girl's number because they made a bet with Margaret and Eileen. <sighs> this episode was just boring and unfunny. God, when I heard the premise of this episode, I thought this was from a Family Guy episode. But nope, it's from regular show. <sighs> anyway, a weak episode. Moving on. Mordecai and Rigby are forced to paint over the bathroom wall because of some graffiti artist. At first, they thought it was Muscle Man, but after finding out that it's someone else, they try their best to bring that person to justice and make sure that Muscle Man gets his job back. I gotta say, this person's art is pretty cool, and it turns out that he's an actual spray can. <laughs> it's regular show, I'm not even shocked anymore. I will admit, this episode is a step up compared to the previous two episodes, and I really recommend this one over the last two. Mordecai and Rigby's wacky, stupid shenanigans ends up knocking Benson unconscious. So with him knocked out, Mordecai and Rigby have to take him back to his house. But after they discover that he had plans with his neighbor Audrey, Mordecai and Rigby decide to bring an unconscious Benson over to her party. I think it's a little wacky that people think that Benson are doing all these actions even though it's clear that Mordecai and Rigby are moving his limbs. But whatever, it's a regular show. I'm not shocked. And I should just accept it at this point. But overall, I think this episode's pretty good, and I like how we delve a little deeper into Benson's social life. I wish they could have done that a little more, but eh, what can you do? Rigby switches fortunes with Benson, resulting in him getting all the bad luck, while Rigby gets all the good luck. It's a shitty episode. Terrible shit keeps happening to Benson, and it's not really all that funny. And in traditional regular show fashion, Rigby doesn't give a shit. This episode sucks, but I'll give it credit, it's not as bad as the next episode. Whoo boy. The worst episode of season 3 by far. So for this episode, Pops forbids Benson from yelling at Mordecai and Rigby. The problem with this episode is that similar to the last episode, Benson tries his best to keep his cool and he constantly gets punished for it. And not to mention, there's serious character development here. Pops threatening to fire Benson just doesn't sit right with me, considering the fact that he never had a problem with Benson yelling at Mordecai and Rigby in the first two seasons. If this was Maillard we're talking about, then I would completely understand. Doesn't mean I would approve of it, but I would totally get it. Another issue here is that Pops completely ignores Mordecai and Rigby's faults and only focuses strictly on Benson. I mean, they give us a reason as to why Benson always yells so much in a flashback, but that's about it. And then eventually this leads to Benson holding in his anger so badly to the point where he becomes a literal fireball. And I heard the actor who plays Benson actually lost his voice during the recording of this. I'm really sorry you lost your voice during one of the worst moments in the show's history. Yes, it is an easy contender for one of the worst episodes in the entire series. You see, Skips has this rep of being this guy that fixes everything, you know? 
but he's met his match, and that match is technology. Hence, we have the name Skips vs. Technology. So he tries to fix the computer for Mordecai and Rigby, but he ultimately fails. So this leaves Mordecai and Rigby to call Tecmo, Skips' friend from the past. I like this episode a lot because this episode can be pretty relatable for old folks out there. Another thing is that we see a little bit of Skips' history, and we see just how much he means to the park. And we see how much his friends truly love and care for him. For example, the paper that Mordecai and Rigby were trying to print out, it was actually a letter for Skips, and it reads, Thanks, Skips, for all your help around the park. We all really appreciate you, Mordo and Riggs. So I think this episode is pretty great, and it focuses on one of my favorite characters. And it ends on a pretty heartwarming note. Uh, hanging with Margaret just to feel so good, like I knew it would. I hate you so much right now. So Mordecai ends up butt-dialing Margaret, and to make sure she doesn't look at the message he sent her, he tries to hack into her phone and delete the message, but he ends up getting sucked into her phone. Oh my god, the first couple of minutes are so cringy. But at the same time, this episode was pretty funny. Sure, it has some pretty cringe-worthy moments, especially with the fact that they repeat the song at the end of the episode. I had a pretty fun time with it. After seeing a commercial on TV, Rigby wants to win this stupid trucker's hat that says, I am excellent on it. But there's a catch. You have to eat this big ass omelet. Dude, you're allergic to eggs? So yeah, he ends up in a coma. So Mordecai and the guys try their best to beat the challenge and get the trucker's hat for Rigby. It's an easy god tier episode. Seeing Mordecai go to the extreme lengths to make sure that his best friend gets that hat is pretty admirable. We even get a nice moment of Benson and Mordecai apologizing to each other after their confrontation at the hospital. And this is important because I'm going to bring this up later. So as it stands, I think it's a phenomenal episode that shows the best of Mordecai and by extension the park crew as well. Oh, wonderful! Another Muscle Man episode! You guys don't know how much I love this character. He's so awesome! <laughs> Sorry guys, I, I, don't, I don't know what came over me. But what do you want me to say? Muscle Man ends up getting pissed off that his friends ditched him even though they have plans with other people. So he decides to work as a gut model. And he becomes distraught to find out that his friends don't seem to care that he's leaving. I distinctly remember Muscle Man saying he had a dream of doing stand-up comedy in a previous episode, so it would make sense that his friends would support him if he ever chose to leave the park. Listen, not only is this episode boring, it's predictable as hell. I've seen this done before in multiple other shows, and not to mention Muscle Man's getting all pissed off even though it was just bad timing. You could have clearly done your celebration tomorrow when everyone was free. And as I said before, he becomes so unhinged at the very end of the episode that he ends up deep frying everything at the party, which results in a fry monster almost destroying everything and killing his best friends. And then when he makes the ultimate sacrifice, he says shit like this. Ugh. My friends needed me. No, they didn't need you. You just acted like a little spoiled bitch when they wouldn't kiss your foot. This episode sucks, moving on. Mordecai and Skips work together to win a grand prize in this video game tournament. And guess what that grand prize is? A power glove. Wasn't that cool? The kid's eyes burst into flames just from looking at it. How is that not cool? It doesn't work. Yeah, that piece of garbage is never going to work. And because he's pissed off that Mordecai chose Skips over him, Rigby starts to get all pissy and angry. I actually enjoyed this episode quite a bit, even though Rigby was acting like a little baby for like half of it. But at the same time, I can understand his feelings because him and Mordecai have done pretty much everything over the course of these three seasons. And I do think it was kind of nice that they ended up winning the Power Glove together in their typical irregular way. Even though that piece of shit is never gonna work. Listen, if watching the Angry Video Game Nerd has taught me anything is that that piece of garbage doesn't work. The only kids who own this were usually the richer ones who thought they were cool. Well, they're not cool. I'm not cool either. Look at me. You think I'm cool? I got a fucking glove on my hand. I'm trying to play a fucking game with it. I look like an idiot with a fistful of shit. 
Dude, why aren't you moving? I don't know. Did you type in the code? Yeah, I typed in the code. It's not doing anything. Dude, this controller blows. So you're telling me after the See You Soon episode, this fat bastard didn't learn his lesson? Ugh. Because they're sick and tired of Muscle Man pranking him, Mordecai and Rigby trick Muscle Man into thinking he's won a million dollars with those fake scratch-off lottery tickets. The episode's pretty tedious with Muscle Man constantly breaking everything in sight thinking that he'll be able to pay for it. And even with that, it's just one of those liar scenarios where the main character doesn't want to tell the truth up until things eventually get out of hand to the point where they inevitably tell the truth. The show's done this whole liar bit in earlier episodes before this one, so you can just skip this episode. But seriously, can there be an episode where this guy just stops pranking for good? This episode is terrible. But since it's my job to talk about every single episode, I guess I can't just leave it at that. Benson has Mordecai and Rigby do all the work they didn't do last week. Okay, wouldn't it make more sense to make sure they're always doing their work rather than just save it at last minute? It's like kids having these assignments they have to do on Monday, but instead of getting the work done on Friday, they decide to wait until last minute to do their work. And this sucks for Mordecai and Rigby because there's this burger truck that sells some of the best burgers in the world. But here's the catch. They only sell it once every hundred years. So every time Mordecai and Rigby try to get the burgers, Benson constantly and aggressively forces them to work. My problem with this episode is that Benson's an even bigger dick than he usually is. He's strict, but kicking Mordecai and Rigby to the ground is a little too far. I've watched every single episode up to this point, and Benson has never been physically aggressive with them. And that's not to say one of them hasn't been aggressive with him, but still, he's the boss. He's not supposed to kick around his employees like that. Eventually, the holograms that Mordecai and Rigby made to distract Benson come to life so they can eat the burgers. They manage to take them out, and then Benson eats the burgers right in front of them. And before the duo can ask for two more burgers, the van ends up driving into a pit. This episode is awful. Oh, Jesus. Not only did we have one bad Benson episode, but we're also getting another one right after the other. That's fucking brilliant. Benson decides to replace Mordecai and Rigby with these two new guys, Chad and Jeremy. And to make sure they keep their jobs, Mordecai and Rigby decide to sabotage them. Yes, Benson is at his absolute worst here, tossing Mordecai and Rigby to the sidelines like pieces of human garbage despite the fact that they've been through pretty much everything over the course of three seasons. Especially in this season alone, like, I am excellent. Like, does that mean nothing to you? But you know who else is pretty bad in this episode? Mordecai and Rigby themselves. They're not innocent in this equation as they're deliberately sabotaging Chad and Jeremy for their own selfish gain. And honestly, I feel bad for these two for dealing with these three idiots. So yeah, this episode's pretty bad. Not on the same level as the last episode, but it's still pretty bad regardless. Rigby stupidly changes his name to Trash Boat. What would you say if I change my name to Trash Boat? I'd say you're a total loser. You wouldn't say it was cool? Not if you're changing your name to Trash Boat. This results in him getting unwanted attraction, as everywhere he goes, everyone starts making fun of him. And then there's this rock star called The Urge who travels back to the present so he can kill Rigby, because apparently, Rigby becomes more famous than him in the future. Honestly, I think the ridiculing in this episode makes more sense than in I'm Smarter. In that episode, he constantly got teased for not having a high school diploma, which is pretty terrible. But in this episode, the attention he gets is primarily his own fault because of his own stupidity. And I think the ending where multiple people travel back in time to kill these other people just because they're more successful than them is pretty funny. Mordecai and Rigby have to do Skips' work for an entire day. But Skips ends up getting hurt because the top half of the harpsichord crushed his hands. And this sucks because he has to fight somebody. And that somebody is Clark Bang the Destroyer. This guy who comes every 157 years to kill the Guardians. No, 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 not that one. 
I think it's a pretty nice episode, with Mordecai and Rigby trying to help Skips, even though it was their fault that his hands got crushed. And I feel like the final fight with them and Clorg Bane is a little underwhelming. Like, they take him down in like a couple of hits. I smell Gary Sue. But aside from that, it's a pretty good episode. Mordecai becomes devastated when he finds out that Margaret is apparently engaged, so this leaves him super depressed. Concerned about his best friend's well-being, Rigby decides to sign him up for online dating, and as a result, this is where he meets CJ. And you know what? I will admit, CJ has much more of a personality than Margaret ever did. Eventually, this leads into the third act where Mordecai discovers that Margaret isn't engaged and he tries to ask her to the movies despite already asking CJ. As it stands, I think it introduced CJ pretty well and I like how Rigby is presented in this episode as he acts like a way better friend than he did in It's Time. And this is where Mordecai's simping levels go through the roof real fast. My boy literally spends five days alone in that room listening to the same crappy music. Well, let's only hope it doesn't get any worse from here on out. Mordecai and Rigby bust up the cart, so as a result, Benson has to take it to the dealership. But what he doesn't know is that Mordecai and Rigby tagged along with them, despite the fact that he didn't want them to. I love this episode very much. Not only do we see development from Benson, Mordecai, and Rigby, but we actually see them bond pretty well. And I also like this scene in particular. It's one of my favorite moments in the entire series. Eventually, Mordecai and Rigby go back to their usual antics of slacking off, and when Benson yells at them, it's pretty heartbreaking rather than hilarious. Like, this specific moment shows how much Benson truly cares about his job. I'm about to lose my job! You may not care about keeping your jobs, but I care about keeping mine. Because if I lose my job, I have nothing. Do you hear me? <laughs> and after realizing they messed up pretty badly, Mordecai and Rigby decide to fix it. I think it's a pretty great episode, although the ending kind of ruins it a little bit, but it still stands strong. Muscle Man almost dies. Damn it. Because of Mordecai and Rigby peer pressuring him, so to save him from death, the two decide to babysit Thomas. No, 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 not that one. A typical babysitting episode. The only thing that makes it not worthless is this throwaway line that Death says. Which will be soon. What with Muscle Man entering that hot dog eating contest. Yeah, they actually make an episode out of that one line. But other than that, it's an episode that's pretty basic. Mordecai and Rigby get invited to go to Margaret's party, but the thing is, it's at this nightclub called Box. But they misunderstood and they end up going to the Box. The whole premise is just making fun of clubs because of how stuck up they can be. Like you have to wear a certain set of clothes to get in, there's this stupid list you have to get your name on in order to get into the club, you know, dumb stuff like that. For what it's worth, I thought it was an okay episode. And hey, at least Mordecai got his dance. Because Rigby was talking shit, Benson decides that he's had enough with him and he just fires him on the spot. Okay, first of all, Rigby acted smart with you before in the Cool Bikes episode and I didn't see you fire him then. I just needed to bring that up. So to make sure he doesn't lose his job, Rigby has to listen to Muscle Man since he's his mentor. You would think I would get on Benson for being a dick, right? But no, this is exactly what Rigby deserves. He's always acted like such a selfish smartass, so it's nice that we get an episode dedicated to him being put in his place. Although I did think that Benson went a little too far during the end. Like, two of his employees are drowning in the river and he doesn't care. He just focuses on the time. Oh boy, Benson, you were at your absolute worst in this season. But hey, I still think this episode's pretty good. A good Muscle Man episode? No. <laughs> no. No. Impossible. There's no way. Muscle Man's dad ends up passing away, so he decides to scatter his father's hat ashes at the Trucker Hall of Fame. With the assistance of Mordecai and Rigby, of course. Well, I'll be damned. 
This episode was pretty good. It reminded me of that American Dad episode where Snot had to deal with his father's passing. Except here it turns out Muscle Man's dad wasn't actually a trucker. It turns out that he was a forklift driver. And throughout the episode, Muscle Man still decides to carry out his father's wish. Which I actually do empathize with. Damn, regular show actually made a good Muscle Man episode. And in season 3 of all seasons. My god. We're not taking Muscle Man to the dump, and he releases noxious fumes all the time! No! He's not worth it! Good point. Can you just kick this character out of the show already? Okay, I'm sorry. That was a little mean. Mordecai and Rigby are heartbroken because they had to get rid of the old carts because the park recently upgraded to a new one. And because of their love to the cart, this eventually leads to the cart coming to life. It's regular show. What do you expect? So they decide to hang out with the cart and fulfill its wishes before throwing it out. And yeah, guess what? At the end of the episode, they end up keeping the old cart anyway. Now granted, this can be relatable for some people out there. For example, console owners. People used to love PlayStation 4, but they're now moving on to PlayStation 5. People used to love the Xbox One, but they're now moving on to the Xbox Series X. People used to love the Wii, but now they're moving on to the Nintendo Switch. See? It's pretty relatable for some people out there, and I do relate to this episode myself. So, I think it's a fine episode. Wow, for one outstanding Muscle Man episode, you end up getting a generic one. <sighs> so Muscle Man pretends to be fancy in order to impress Starla's parents. And also, Mordecai and Rigby tried to help him along the way. And then we get to the predictable ending of, it turns out, Starla's parents are just like Muscle Man, and they went this far just to impress him. Whoa. I don't know, but when it comes to the parents meeting the boyfriend or girlfriend of their child, I think it would make a lot more sense for the boyfriend or the girlfriend to impress the parent rather than the other way around. So, that whole thing right there is just goddamn stupid. But what can I say? This episode's generic. Moving on. Mordecai and Rigby were originally sent over to Margaret's house to water her plants. But because of Rigby acting like a dick, they end up breaking a lock on her diary. I like how they make this callback to the It's Time episode. That was pretty nice. So they turn to Skips who has this ancient ritual of switching the diary from the new one to the old one. But after Rigby invades Margaret's privacy, a guardian of Margaret almost kills all of them. I like how we learn the origin of why Skips keeps on skipping, as it turns out that he had a girlfriend and they used to skip together all the time. And when he lost her, he vowed to keep on skipping for her. The next secret is that Mordecai took his bed and stacked it on top of Rigby's bed, which explains why Rigby is sleeping on a trampoline. And for the last secret, it's revealed that Rigby has an interest in Eileen. So I think this episode is pretty strong overall. Mordecai and Rigby have to find a lost tape they rented two months ago. It's alright, I guess. Not much to say. The disgusting basement dwelling virgin has the opportunity to pick a different VHS tape, but he ends up picking the best VHS in the world. The thing that Mordecai and Rigby tried to bring back to the VHS store. Hey, you remember when I asked earlier, why doesn't Muscle Man just stop pranking altogether? Well, we're going to find the answer to that question right now. After Muscle Man accidentally drops a bed frame onto Pops, he vows never to prank ever again. And guess what? The second he vows to never prank again, a prank war happens. Who fucking saw that coming? I knew that. I, know, I knew that was coming. Did you saw that coming? I knew that was going to come. The funny thing I find about this episode is that Mordecai and Rigby get almost fired for simple things, but the second Muscle Man drops a bed frame onto Pops, he doesn't face any repercussions for his actions. Like, Benson doesn't threaten him with being fired at all. Like, what the fuck? But as for the episode itself, I say it's a pretty good parody of war movies. It doesn't change the fact that the episode's pretty predictable, though. 
Rigby challenges Mordecai to take a picture inside Death Bear's cage in order to prove he's not chicken. It seems pretty simple, right? I mean, sure, the park looks ancient and deserted, but hey, at least Death Bear isn't real, right? Right? I thought this was a pretty good episode. It's a pretty fun Mordecai, Margaret, Eileen, and Rigby centered episode, and it shows the absolute best in Mordecai. My boy knocks Death Bear into the wall. Tell me that's not awesome. It's Pops' birthday and the park crew doesn't know what to get him. He reveals to them that he wants these fuzzy dice that can only be won at the Fun Fun Zone, which is basically like Chuck E. Cheese. I remember I went there as a kid. Worst place ever. And I don't care how many people I piss off with that statement, that place is trash. This episode had some pretty funny jokes in it. So I want everyone to line up and when the balls drop... And it's pretty nice that the park crew went out of their way to go to the fun fun zone just to get the fuzzy dice for Pops. But then there are these stupid animatronics that come to life just to take it from them because these dice have diamonds in it. <laughs> what the fuck? What can I say? It's a pretty funny episode. It's a great one. Mordecai and Rigby are tasked with getting donuts for the morning meeting, but after Pops eats an apple fritter, he becomes super hyper. Like, he becomes more hyper than me. So this results in the duo trying to calm him down before the meeting starts. This episode taught me a good lesson of not eating sweet food all the time. And yes, granted, Rigby's body did do that first, but still. I like the way the environment looks when Mordecai, Rigby, and Pops get so high on Sugar Rush. And it turns out that Skips didn't save the day in this episode like he usually does. Moral of the story, don't get junked up on sweets. Mordecai and Margaret finally kiss, but as the title states, he had bad breath while doing the deed. So with the time machine that Rigby got, they travel back in time to try and give past Mordecai fresher breath, so that when he kisses her, it's not that bad. This takes moving backwards to a whole nother level. Basically, Mordecai and Margaret are back to square one. Moving on. Okay, I'm joking. I did like the numerous callbacks to previous episodes in this one, especially when they're time skipping. And overall, I think it's a pretty fun episode. But I do have this one question. When it came to this scene, why didn't Eileen, Rigby, or Margaret go down there? Like, I don't... Easily one of the best episodes in the entire series. The park is going to be destroyed, and not only that, everyone's minds has been brainwashed. So it's up to Mordecai and Rigby to bring everyone back so that they can stop this villain from building a freeway and also save the park on top of that. So before Avengers Endgame, we had this episode. And this episode brings back multiple villains that the crew has faced, and it's pretty awesome to watch. And seeing the park crew in different occupations is pretty interesting too. Hell, we even get introduced to a new character, Thomas, who's voiced by Sonic. Yeah, it's gonna be a really easy way to get three credits. Hey Sonic! Enjoy your future! It's gonna be great! And as for the bad guy, he's the offspring of Gary Bobby Ferguson. So this is a basic plot of revenge. So it makes sense that he would bring his father back along with multiple other villains. So yeah, this episode is truly outstanding, and it has a lot of fan service. <laughs> Jesus, the fan service in this one is through the roof. And not to mention, it has a badass endgame. And it's an episode I highly recommend you guys watch at least once. Wonderful, we go from one of the best episodes in the series to another shitty Muscle Man episode. For the first couple of minutes, Thomas goes through his initiation process, which is the park crew constantly pranking him. And after he's made it through, he is now a welcome addition to the park. But Muscle Man, being Muscle Man, decides to keep pranking him further. And the second he gets pranked back by Mordecai and Rigby, he goes Incredible Hulk mode. 
This episode sucks. Throughout the entire episode, it's just Mordecai and Rigby being worried for Thomas and Thomas not standing up for himself. I just realized something. This episode is pretty similar to the Amazing World of Gumball episode, The Girlfriend. In that episode, Darwin was in an abusive relationship with Jamie. And instead of talking to somebody to hopefully get out of it, he decided to keep quiet. So let me get this straight. Gumball's giving terrible advice on abusive relationships, and now regular show is giving terrible advice on bullying? <laughs> Ain't that just wonderful. And don't get me started on that atrocious ending. The second Muscle Man rightfully gets pranked back, he goes so crazy to the point where, at first I thought he killed Thomas. But nope, it turns out that was a prank as well. So basically Mordecai and Rigby worrying for Thomas meant nothing. <laughs> this episode sucks. Another Treehouse of Horror, wait, no, sorry, I mean Terror Tales of the Park. The first segment is about Mordecai killing his uncle, and as a result, his uncle starts to haunt him. The second segment follows Mordecai, Rigby, Margaret, and Eileen getting on a party bus that keeps on going until eventually they grow old and almost die. And the last segment is about Mordecai and Rigby hiring this guy who will wallpaper their entire house for free. Yeah, that's a dead giveaway. Nothing's free these days. And it turns out that the guy is a giant spider. I think this Halloween special is way better than the first one. The stories are much more interesting and beyond entertaining. With the first one, it's funny because it turns out that the reason why his uncle was haunting him was because he wanted to give him the $5 that he owed him. The second story is pretty creative, and the last one could definitely be a regular show episode. The only thing that's out of character is Benson saying this. Just follow the instructions and make it nice or you're doing it over again. You didn't have to throw the equipment at us. Yes, I did. He would definitely say something along the lines of, if you don't wallpaper this house, you're fired. But eh, whatever. Without a doubt, the best Halloween special out of all of them so far. Mordecai and Rigby want to judge this year's pie contest, but they discover that it's a lot harder than it looks. A pretty forgettable episode. Benson acting like an asshole isn't funny. The pie eating everybody at the end was pretty entertaining, although it reminded me of the hot dog episode. But overall, it's a pretty forgettable episode. It's not hateable, but it definitely doesn't leave an impact on you. Oh, just because I'm some lame old park manager, I can't do it? <laughs> yeah, that solo features 150 pieces of percussion. Call me crazy, but that's a little disrespectful given the fact that this is the same guy that saved you while you were addicted to stick hockey. So if he can kick ass at stick hockey, I'm pretty sure he can perform that drum solo. Benson tries to bring out his 150 piece drum kit, because there's this band that claims that the solo he played was artificially made. So he tries to prove them wrong with the help of Mordecai and Rigby. I like this episode. Yeah, sometimes Benson's a dick, especially in episodes like The Best Burger in the World and Replace. But in this episode, you actually end up rooting for him. Because these bastards claim that all the hard work he put into it was artificially made. And that's a big slap in the face to him. Especially when it's revealed that he went this hard on the solo. It's pretty nice that after Mordecai and Rigby see how fake the band is, they automatically help Benson like that. A pretty great episode. It turns out that Muscle Man is bald, so as a result of this, he does everything in his desperate attempt to cover it. And this is because he thinks that when Starla sees it, she's going to automatically dump him. It's a pretty predictable episode. I mean, I appreciate the message that it's what's on the inside that counts, but that message is as old as dirt. It's kind of cute, I guess, but I'm not going to give it the light of day. Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, and High Five Ghosts have a guys night. Guys night! Guys night! And after seeing it, Pops wants to be a part of it. But the only way he can be part of the guys is to drink a whole gallon of milk and raise it over his head. 
a pretty strong episode that shows Pops really trying his hardest to be a part of the guys. And I like how the guys don't ridicule him just because he can't do it. Hell, they even wanted him to be a part of the group despite the fact that he didn't do the challenge. And I think that's pretty nice. So I think it's a pretty strong Pop-centered episode as it shows him going through some strong character development. Everybody in the park is forced to do a fitness test. Everybody passes with flying colors except Rigby because he cannot do a single pull-up. Womp, 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 womp. Stop talking! Honestly, I shouldn't be that shocked. So with no one to turn to, Rigby turns to Eileen, who is pretty goddamn great at doing pull-ups. Like, look at this. She does it like it's nothing. A pretty great Rigby-centered episode. I like how he's willing to go this far just to keep his job. Sure, it does remind me a lot of Muscle Mentor, but I think this episode is way better than that one. Hell, we even get to see Rigby and Eileen bond, which is pretty nice to see. And then we see Rigby get so jacked that I'm pretty sure someone was enjoying themselves on DeviantArt. So yeah, I think this episode is way better than Muscle Mentor, by a dick ton. And what shocked me most about Rigby eventually doing the pull-up is that Benson was actually happy. Yeah, the man who tried his damnedest to get rid of Mordecai and Rigby was actually happy that Rigby did the pull-up and got to stay at the park. Wow. Wow. Regular show, all new half hour Christmas special, Monday night at 8, 7 central, only on Cartoon Network. Hey, a Christmas special. We haven't had one of those yet. Santa Claus tasks Mordecai and Rigby to get rid of this magic box that can give anybody whatever they want if they look inside. But the problem is, if you look inside, it can bring out the worst in people. Hence this scene. What the? I want to see? Oh, sweet. No! Give me! <laughs> so Mordecai, Rigby, and the park crew have to go through a dangerous journey to dump the box in a lava pit before this elf gets his hands on it. Because if he gets his hands on it, it could mean the end of Christmas forever. The journey is pretty entertaining and pretty dangerous. And I'm not gonna lie, it reminded me of the Goonies. Especially with this moment. Looks like it's before your time too, Benson. No questions to play it right, please! I love this episode even more because Santa was played by Ed Asner, the man who played Carl from Up. Rest in peace. So yeah, this episode is a pretty goddamn great Christmas episode, and I totally recommend you guys give it a watch, at least once. Especially around the holidays. With Margaret transferring to another college, Mordecai, Rigby, and Eileen try throwing a going away party for her. So they go to this old ballroom to set up, but it's still haunted by the previous hosts. I think it's a pretty good episode, and also this episode has one of my personal favorite jokes in the entire season. This ballroom used to host the most elegant balls in its day. Whoa, were they big? These balls were huge. <laughs> In the re-releases of this episode, they had to alter that line. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's still good, even if they alter it. And I think the ending is pretty awesome. I didn't think an episode focused on Margaret would be this great, but it was a pretty fun time. After he blew up the 4th of July fireworks, Muscle Man and by extension Mordecai Rigby and High Five Ghost are forced to find new fireworks and they end up finding themselves in trouble with the Mafia. I've seen episodes like this done in Family Guy and South Park to an extent. It's not bad, it's just not anything crazy. I just find it middle of the road. Oh, wonderful. Another episode focusing on Starla. My favorite character. It's official. Every single episode focusing on Starla fucking sucks. For this episode, Starla wants to put her and Muscle Man's relationship to the test by spending a weekend apart. So, as a result, they get help from their respective genders. I hate this episode because of Starla herself. 
She pretty much forces Muscle Man to do this, and when he actually tries to go through with it, she ends up bitching and complaining, saying, Why would he actually listen to me? He should know the difference between me meaning things and me not meaning things. And I'm not paraphrasing here. That's an actual line from the episode. Because you said if he did, you'd dump him. Well, I didn't mean it. He should know the difference between me meaning things and me not meaning things. Starla, there's no way he can guess what you're thinking all the time. That's impossible. It should be possible. And as for Muscle Man, I end up feeling bad for the guy because he's literally driving himself crazy because of this idiot watching a movie and deciding to interject what happened in the movie into their relationship. This episode sucks. I'm done with this. Please, no more Starla episodes moving forward, okay? Please, I'm begging you. Mordecai and Rigby get a death sandwich. Benson ends up eating the sandwich as payback for what they did to his grilled cheese back in season 1. But he ends up almost on the verge of death, so they go to this guy from the Death Punchies episode so that he can help them get the antidote to Benson's condition. I like this episode purely because it's a nice little parody of martial arts films or old school video games from the past, like Kung Fu Panda in a sense. It's a pretty good episode. Mordecai and Rigby want to reunite a famous band with this guy that looks exactly like their lead singer just so they can experience them on stage. Eh, I like the continuity, but that's about it. Muscle Man bets Mordecai that if he kisses Margaret by Friday, he'll wear a diaper, but if he doesn't, he has to wear the diaper. It's just like The Longest Weekend, except it's even more painful to watch. It's just Muscle Man and Rigby pressuring Mordecai to kiss Margaret. So throughout the episode, I'm just waiting for her to find out about the bed, and then they do the whole traditional running away instead of talking. And honestly... I thought this was the moment where Margaret would kiss Mordecai and then this whole fiasco will be over with by the end because it seems like she's going to kiss him. But to give you one middle finger, they decide to do this shit. Have a nice week, diaper boy. <laughs> Go f*** yourself. Which means that I still have a chance to kiss her one day. You mean we'll have to keep waiting and waiting to see if you'll ever do something about it? Hey, it's got to be the right moment. So you're telling me I have to wait 12 episodes just for you to make a move? This episode sucks, moving on. Skips has a cousin who tells lame jokes, and then eventually Skips has to tell his cousin that he's not funny. Skip. Mordecai and Rigby want a third friend, so they end up meeting a caveman. Sure, why not? And then they decide that they want him to be their third friend. I will admit that this one is way better than the last one, as we see Greg trying to reunite with his love, but after she sees how civilized he's become, she wants nothing to do with him. So she ends up releasing her caveman comrades to wreak havoc all over the park. And it did have a pretty sad yet heartwarming moment, with him freezing himself and his wife along with the other cave people in the meat locker. So I think it's a better step up than the last episode. Mordecai and Rigby go to meet their childhood hero, RGB2. Usually there's this saying against never meeting your heroes, but I'll let that slide. But they recently discovered that RGB2 wants to escape the studio because he's being held prisoner by the executives. Just another day in Hollywood, am I right? After learning this, Mordecai and Rigby decide to help him out. I like this episode because even though it's not intentionally meta, it still holds up to today's standards. Think about it, there are multiple franchises that are coming back now purely because they made money in the past. Hell, there's even a moment where RGB2 said that when the studio was making a revival series, he wanted to turn it down but his contracts forbid him to. Now, I kind of feel bad for the cast and crew behind The Simpsons Family Guy in South Park. Because in a sense, they're kind of slaves to their respective corporations. But aside from that, I find this episode to be pretty goddamn great overall. I feel like what it does still holds up to today's standards, and I had a pretty fun time with it. Also, I like how this episode shows how toxic fans and executives are. Hey, I've gotten to the 100th episode. Nice. 
And before anyone complains that this is technically episode 102, that's not what the promo says. Regular show, 100th episode special, Monday night at 8, 7 central. With that out of the way, Mordecai and Rigby have to deal with these grown geese that are taking over the lake. They try to take them down themselves, which obviously doesn't work, so they get help from some old friends. I think this is a good sequel to a bunch of baby ducks. I feel like the final battle in this one is pretty awesome, and we even get some nice easter eggs from previous episodes. For example, the I am excellent hat, the stupid controller that doesn't work, play co arm boy, the short pants, the basketball shoes, the power, and even the fanny pack. And in a sense, this episode reminds me of a Godzilla movie, or even Transformers. Not, not the movie, it's the TV show. So I had a pretty fun time watching this one, and I recommend this one over a bunch of baby ducks any day of the week. What can I say? I just like this one better. And I have a special love for this episode because the mother of the four baby ducks calls out Benson for raging on Mordecai and Rigby. Thank you so much for that. Mordecai Rigby and begrudgingly Benson end up on a game show called Fool Me Twice. This episode has a special place in my heart because I used to watch this show Wipeout with my grandfather. And in that show you had to get through these obstacle courses. And most of the time these people would get hurt pretty badly. Here, I'll play some clips. Is it my dialect? What's going on here? Two, three. Whoa! Fly Jettis with a 98 degree turn. Oh, right. Could be all he can be. The rhythm. Oh, oh, oh. Right in the Most rockers could use a thorough scrubbing from the car wash. Oh. God, classic times. Also, that reboot show is fucking garbage. I like how the host running this show actually loves punching people in the face because if he goes too long without punching people, his hand turns into this. So now Mordecai, Rigby, and Benson have to win the obstacle course and avoid getting punched in the face by this guy. And I love how the roles reverse when they get to the final course, with Mordecai and Rigby who originally wanted to play on the game show, but after realizing how brutal it is, they just decide to quit right then and there. And Benson, who originally didn't want to play the game, really gives it his all in the final act, even going as far as carrying Mordecai and Rigby to the finish line. And I gotta say, when Benson has some badass moments, he really has some badass moments, and this just fits into his previous achievements, whether it's playing stick hockey or him doing his drum solo. Like seriously, this man has some cool moments, and this is no exception. My god, these two can be idiots sometimes. Oh, why are we so dumb? After Mordecai and Rigby trash Mr. Mailer's limousine with a meatball sub, they try to replace it entirely, resulting in them participating in a rich limo demolition derby. I thought the Limosaurus was pretty cool, and this is a much better demolition derby episode than SpongeBob's. Mordecai has to pick up Benson's car so that he can drive Margaret to the airport. I love the obvious nods and references to the Warriors, and I love how the gang members are going after Mordecai purely because he used a cell phone in their territory. I liked the chase scene at the end, and it ends on a pretty satisfying note with Mordecai finally giving Margaret a kiss. Well, it's the other way around, but it doesn't matter, it still counts. But there's still not a couple yet. Hey, one step at a time I guess. Muscle Man wants to share his crappy music on Kill It Radio for Starla. I like how regular show makes fun of automated systems. That was pretty funny. No, I want to talk to somebody. Zero, zero, zero. I'm transferring you to our bilingual system. No, zero, zero, zero. Hola, Yamaste Radio, kill it. Uh, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> So anyway, it's revealed that Kill It Radio has been overthrown by a machine, and all the previous music stars who've worked at Kill It Radio immediately ran away, except for Donnie G, who's remained a prisoner there for years. I will admit that part is interesting, but it just reminds me of the That's My Television episode, but a little bit different. Also, I like this one. 
The point is not to let some lame machine tell you what to do. Radio should be for the people, by the people. You hear that, Disney? The projects you've been putting out should be made with heart and soul, not people that just want to collect a paycheck. You greedy, money-hungry motherfucker. Honestly, it's one of the better Muscle Man episodes. Mordecai and Rigby enter a donut contest so they can win a guest spot in their favorite police show, Carter and Briggs. Eh, the limousine episode was better. Skip's stress gets so out of hand to the point where if he doesn't get it under control, there's a possibility that he will die. So this leads Skips to go to this ancient stress bell so he can get rid of his stress once and for all. I like how they portray stress in this episode. Because, yeah, for some people, more specifically YouTubers, stress can be a very common thing for us. Because most times whenever we do a big project for a video, there are many things that cause us to be stressed. Whether it's the viewers actually watching our months of hard work, or YouTube actually recommending the videos you worked your damnedest to complete. And it's not just limited to YouTube. Jobs, careers, school life, and other forms of work can cause you to be stressed out. I have respect for this episode because I find it highly relatable, and I do like how the park crew help out Skips in the end. That was pretty nice. Especially since Skips is the one who always helps out everybody in the park. After Thomas drinks a dangerous slushy that literally freezes his brain, Mordecai and Rigby have to enter his brain to try and stop the slushy from reaching the brain's core. It reminds me of Brain Eraser. Just a little bit, but different. And the slushy dude kind of reminds me of the coffee bean from the first season. Coffee, coffee. Freeze, freeze. Eh, it's fine. A health inspector inspects the park, and after coming across Muscle Man's trailer, he decides that he's going to take it away. So the park crew has 24 hours to fix it up. And after they fix it up, the guy still decides that he's going to take it away. And it turns out that this guy has a personal beef against Muscle Man because originally he was supposed to win the trailer during a hot dog eating contest. So he gets a whole crew together to get that damn trailer. Guy goes all out. He does all of this. He almost kills people over a goddamn trailer. You can't get any more crazier than that. And if you want that style of a trailer, go on ahead, have it. But luckily there's a nice twist at the end, so Muscle Man still keeps his trailer. Okay, let's skim through this episode. Mordecai and Margaret kiss and they become a thing. Moving on. Mordecai tries to impress Margaret's dad by doing cannonballs into the pool. At first glance, it does seem like a pretty generic episode of meeting the parents, but I think it's a little better executed here. Margaret's dad works for the Channel 6 News, so he rides the helicopter most of the time. So he decides to incorporate his chopper in the next cannonball. Oh my god. I think the final picture of this episode really says it all. So yeah, a pretty solid episode with a pretty generic premise. Mordecai, Rigby, High Five Ghost, and Muscle Man discover a laser disc, so they try to find a laser disc player so they can watch this movie, but then they discover that they are the four chosen ones who are supposed to reunite the laser disc with the laser disc player. And in traditional regular show fashion, there are some people like the VHS users that are trying to destroy it. So it's basically format wars, where you see multiple obsolete formats like VHS, Betamax, 8-track, floppy disk, and reel-to-reel -reel participating in the war. And to be honest, this episode reminded me of the Tally episode from South Park, where the boys just want to play their game spear, but they end up in this adventure that they wanted no part in. It's the same thing here. I find this episode pretty funny, and I love all the nods to the previous formats we used to use. This is not an ordinary tower. He is the RG400 Smart Tower, designed with a computer chip inside the Terracloth. We don't care. The Disc Masters! No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. The golf cart ends up getting confiscated by these rich douchebags, so it's up to Mordecai and Rigby to break in and try to take the cart back. 
It's one of the most generic episodes of the show I've ever seen. I mean, it's not bad or anything, it's just so generic. I've seen this done multiple times in other shows. It doesn't do anything special. Except for the final act. But that was just weird. Now this is a way better episode than Think Positive, because unlike that episode, Pops is actually in character here. Pops notices that Benson doesn't trust Mordecai and Rigby to do anything, so he takes the trio to the top of this mountain so that they can perform a series of trust-based obstacles. I think this episode is pretty good, and I do like how Mordecai and Rigby are trying to be more competent than usual. Because usually in these episodes, their stupidity gets grouped up to 100, and I don't understand why they do that. I think this episode's pretty good, and it's on par with Busted Cart, as this episode helps develop Mordecai, Rigby, and Benson's relationship. Everybody in the park tries to get Benson a meaningful gift since he's been working at the park for 10 years. So they decide to get a mug with the world's best boss written on it, and they end up fighting a guy who is apparently the world's best boss. <laughs> you can't make this up. You really can't. It's a pretty nice episode with everybody in the park trying their best to get that mug. Because this really goes to show how much they respect Benson despite the fact that he could be ill-tempered, irrational, and kind of unlikable at times. Starla decides that she and Muscle Man should go on a diet. <laughs> oh, wow. Hmm. I'm not going to say anything. Let's just continue. So with the help of High Five Ghost, Mordecai, and Rigby, Muscle Man wants to eat all of his favorite junk foods one last time. Which will be soon. What with Muscle Man entering that hot dog eating contest. Oh, right. This episode makes a callback to Detta 8. Right. And I do find it kind of awkwardly touching that Starla accepts Muscle Man's choice in the end. But it's one I always skip, so it doesn't matter. God, this is like the 11th episode focusing on Muscle Man. Jesus Christ. Muscle Man ends up beating people up in his sleep, so the crew tries to find the root of why he's doing this. And it turns out that he has nightmares of these things. When he was taking care of his girlfriend's sister's baby, they binge watched eight seasons of this crap. Okay, irony aside, so the best way to make sure that Muscle Man doesn't have any more nightmares of these things is to take those creepy things and place them into their world. See it as a G-rated Nightmare on Elm Street, if you will. I like how the crew uses dream catchers to get rid of them, and I'm pretty sure this is relatable for sleepwalkers out there. Well, excluding the punching part. Huh? Okay, this is a park problem. <laughs> nice one. So Benson ends up ditching the park to be a party starter. Or so it seems. In actuality, the people from the party starter company kidnapped him and cloned him so that they could use him for their own selfish gain. And it turns out that they cloned the original Party Pete. I like this episode because it builds up on the background of that episode, Party Pete, by showing how the corporations are using these people and cloning them for their own selfish gain. I say it's way better than that episode, to be honest. Mordecai wants to officially ask Margaret to be his girlfriend, but then he ends up getting rubbed up in some bullshit with these Amadeus dollars. So he must balance finding out who the dealer is and try to ask Margaret to be his girlfriend at the same time. I like how the animatronics from the Fuzzy Dice episode come back, even though they're supposed to be dead. And I remember this episode living in infamy because after multiple seasons of trying to get Mordecai and Margaret together, it ends up being tossed out the window because it's revealed that Margaret was accepted to her dream school, something that she's talked about multiple times over the course of the season. Looking back, it's understandable why she wouldn't want to be in a relationship, especially in a long-distance relationship, because everybody knows how hard those can be. I think that's the reason why I was so pissed off at this episode when I was younger, because they wasted four seasons to build this up only for it to get tossed into the trash can. 
I mean, I get this can be relatable to some people out there, but given the fact that I'm not a romantic type person and I don't like romance in general, especially in media like this, it was a glorified waste of time. But as for the episode itself, I don't really hate it as much as I used to. There are some pretty funny moments here and there. And when I was younger, I was pretty interested to see how Mordecai would deal with the healing process of this situation. But as an adult, wow, it's only going to go downhill for his character, isn't it? Mordecai is in a depressive rut after Margaret left. After having his friends cheer him up, he starts to finally move on with his life. But then he starts to regress down into being a total simp after he comes across Margaret's sweater. Oh man. Oh no, 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 no. And he even decides that he's just going to give it to her himself. Why, 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 why? It's a long drive. You don't believe me? The episode literally states it. 20 hours to give Margaret a sweater? She probably doesn't even know it's missing. This episode's not as bad as I initially thought. I mean, it does give a solid message on how it's best to move on with your life. And if there's one thing that you can learn by watching Mordecai, it's that you should stop simping. Seriously, if there's a girl that you like and you put her on a high pedestal, stop simping, you stupid mother. Mordecai and Rigby want to get a new game, so they decide that rapping on the street is much easier, even though doing your job is much simpler given the fact that you guys did this in the first season, but I digress. But the problem starts to arise when this guy, the Silver Dude, starts taking their material and implementing it into his own. So they start to battle each other for the crowd's money. It's fine, I guess? I think the beginning half of the episode is pretty relatable, but... Honestly, it's, it's, it's fine. Mordecai and Rigby accidentally crack Benson's windshield, so they try to find someone who can fix it for extra cheap. Meanwhile, Benson hires a bounty hunter to track down the scum who stole his car. I did like that Benson shielded Mordecai and Rigby when the guy found out that it was them. And honestly, I think the guy makes for a pretty good antagonist, because he's got the technology to track you down in an instant. It's a pretty good episode, and I thought the ending was pretty goddamn funny. Oh, Mordecai, check this out. Told you my guy was good. Hey look, it's Chad and Jeremy from the Replaced episode. Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, and High Five Ghost want to get in every meat burrito. But the fast food joint won't hook a brother up because they don't have a car. So they end up getting a car from the impound lot. And there's this guy that's lived in this car for so long that he thinks he's still living in the 70s. It's decent, I guess. They have this one overdone gag of Mordecai constantly punching this guy in the face. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. You guys better not start doing Family Guy style gags. Yeah, this is Rigby's worst episode. Mordecai and Rigby's room looks like a total pigsty, so Benson says that they both need to clean it up. Even though, in essence, it's Rigby that's a total slob as opposed to Mordecai, but whatever. So the episode is basically just Rigby acting like his season 1 self. And honestly, I don't like that sense of character derailment, considering the fact that he's grown so much over the course of five seasons. And the fact that they had to nerf him down for the sake of this episode is stupid. I will admit that Wall Buddy going off the rails was pretty entertaining, I guess, but it doesn't make up for the fact that this was a pretty shitty Rigby episode. A teenage Skips comes to the present while storm chasing. So this leads Mordecai, Rigby, and Skips to come up with a plan to send him back to the 1700s. God, this is the second time my boy Skips was on the verge of death. My god. And who knew they would actually make a movie based on that premise? Sure, it's a typical younger version of the character coming to meet the older version of the character, but I still like this episode very well. Which is rare for someone like me because I actively don't like time travel, but I thought it was handled well here. 
But I do have this one question, and it's specifically with this callback. Sure, we had a bunch of them, but Mordecai broke them over a girl who ended up leaving him. Hey, it was mutual. That's what they all say. Ow! How would Rigby know about the events of Bad Kiss? The only one who would know about that is Mordecai. Why the fuck am I talking about this? Also, I like how Younger Skips is completely different compared to Older Skips, with this one being full of adventure and open to new possibilities. So yeah, it's a pretty goddamn solid episode. Mordecai and Rigby have to get tortillas, but when they try to return back, they end up getting lost, so they have to remember Benson's survival skills in order to get through. I like the 8-bit animation that's in this episode, and although it does have some pretty funny moments, it can be rather predictable. For example, it seems like they've been gone for a very long time, months even, but it's only revealed to be a couple of hours. What? Year is it? You guys have only been gone a couple hours. And it turns out that Benson had burgers this whole time. I had a feeling this might happen. Thomas, can you take the backup burgers over to the grill, please? So what the hell was the point of them getting tortillas if you had burgers? Like, they didn't... Whatever, fine, whatever, skip. Huh, what do you know? Another treehouse of horror... Oh, goddamn. Terror Tales of the Park. Let's go. The first one's about Rigby getting a bed, and shocker, it ends up being a killer. Quite literally. The next one's about Muscle Man, High Five Ghost, Mordecai, and Rigby smashing a pumpkin patch. And as a result of this, a scarecrow, who has a pumpkin for a head for some reason, starts turning them into pumpkins. And the last one focuses on a poltergeist who's named Jebediah Townhouse. And it turns out that he is the rightful owner of the house, and when he comes back 200 years later, he is out for revenge. I'd say that this is another great Halloween episode. I thought the second act was pretty entertaining, the last act is by far the best one out of all of them, and the first act was pretty weak. I think it shares the same level of quality as the first Terror Tales of the Park. Pops gets tans for Mordecai and Rigby, and in traditional regular show fashion, they end up messing up their tans. So they rely on Eileen to help them fix it. It's fine, I guess. Rigby ends up mouthing off to the wrong guys at Wing Kingdom. So they settle this nonsense by doing bank shots. But Rigby is noticeably performing worse than he usually does. So in order to get his hat back, and in order for his friends to no longer stay mad at him, because he kind of robed them into the bed he made with this person, he gets help from his younger brother, Don. I like how the relationship between Rigby and Don has changed dramatically after the whole Sugar episode. Seeing Rigby and Don train was pretty entertaining, even though it reminded me a lot of Rigby and Eileen's training from the pull-up episode, but eh, what can you do? And the final bank shot was pretty goddamn awesome, so I think this is a pretty good episode. Muscle Man, High Five Ghost, Mordecai, and Rigby get banned from the gym because of this brolic dickhead. So this leaves Muscle Man to try and win the weightlifting contest. Eh, it could have been worse. And I will admit, I did feel a sense of fear seeing Muscle Man almost risking his life just so his friends could play ping pong at this gym. That was pretty cool. It's a decent little episode. Also, when I was younger, I remember the colors looking a little bit janky when I first saw this episode. And it was because of the episode's production, not the TV at all. Because I kept turning off and on the TV and it still looked weird. I was like, what the hell's going on? Regular show, all new half hour Thanksgiving special. Next Monday night at 7.30, 6.30 central, only on Cartoon Network. Mordecai and Rigby, shocker, mess up Thanksgiving. So it's up to the crew to try and replace the food in time. Okay, is it me, or does this guy look disturbingly a lot like Donald Trump? I'm not tripping, am I? You guys see it too, right? Whatever. I thought this was a pretty good 22-minute episode. It's on par with the Christmas one. We see different members of the park trying to get the food in time, and there's this whole concert that Mordecai and Rigby try to attend just so they can get this turkey. And in this concert, you get multiple cameos from characters that made their appearance in the show. And we even get to see Mordecai and Rigby's parents. 
And it's important that you look at Rigby's father. Look at him, okay? Because I'm going to bring this up later. But as it stands, I think it's a pretty great Thanksgiving episode. It's Timmy's birthday. No, not that one. I'm talking about a character who's never made an appearance in this series, ever. I think they were trying to reference Jimmy, a character who was in the Just Set Up The Chairs episode. But then why didn't they just use... Okay, fine, whatever. Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, and High Five Ghost need to get a stuntman's license so they can perform a stunt at Jimmy's birthday party. So they turn to this stuntman who's been in 40 comas. Sure, why not? Kind of like with the Power Tower episode, I think it's a decent episode. It's nice that Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, and High Five Ghost are going all out just to make sure that this kid has a good birthday party. And I will admit that the final act is pretty entertaining and pretty intense. Oh Jesus, we got another one of these episodes. Rigby runs into his future self in the bathroom, and he's here to tell him that Mordecai is going to kiss someone that he definitely shouldn't, so it's up to Rigby to try and stop him. This episode reminds me of the Bad Kiss episode, except time travel doesn't play a key factor here. Although I do feel like Mordecai is a little bit out of character. For example, when Rigby tries to tell him that he ran into his future self in the bathroom, he just pretends it's not a big deal. So, I'm guessing these episodes don't matter? I like how Rigby does try to help Mordecai in this episode. It really goes to show how much he's grown over the course of the series. It's pretty satisfying. And the whole purpose of this episode was to ship Mordecai and CJ again. And honestly, I think they're a much better couple than Mordecai and Margaret. Now let's move on to the next episode. The park enters a dodgeball contest. Hey, nice, a dodgeball episode. But things start to go bad for Mordecai as it turns out that CJ is a part of the tournament. Oh, Jesus. This is one of those situations where the two avoid each other because they feel awkward around each other, and in traditional regular show fashion, some crazy stuff happens and then they end up in a different dimension, and then eventually they come clean with each other and it turns out that it was a misunderstanding. I hate this. It took a good concept and just made a generic misunderstanding episode. But here's the deal. When we focus on the dodgeball elements, it's pretty goddamn good. But when we focus on the CJ and Mordecai elements, it's pretty bland. CJ dares Mordecai to eat a sandwich in a portable toilet. Rigby goes with him. So they go in there. Everything's going fine. And then a few seconds later... It's stuck. Dude, that's not funny. Why would I joke about this? You know how I am with small spaces? <laughs> Come on, dude. So yeah, the whole episode is just Mordecai and Rigby stuck in a portable toilet. What do you want me to say? It's a glorified filler episode. Not much happens. I mean, the only thing that happens is that Mordecai likes CJ a whole lot more after she saved him and Rigby from almost getting blown up at a military base. But that's about it. Moving on. High Five Ghost tries to find this girl he met four years ago. It's cute, I guess. It's not really my cup of tea. I mean, at least they gave High Five Ghost something, because out of the group, he is probably the least interesting character. But I will give credit that they gave him an episode where he can finally grow. Next. Mordecai and Rigby's high school reunion is coming up. And after discovering that he's kind of a loser, Rigby tries to accomplish one thing on his to-do list before going to the high school reunion. So he decides that skydiving while eating a burrito is one of the things that he can achieve. And honestly, I kind of relate to this episode. And I relate to Rigby in a sense. Because when you go to these reunions, you want to show people that you're much more different than what you used to be like. But the stinger at the end is that it turns out that it was Pops' high school reunion. Wonderful. Hey, remember Muscle Man's horse segment from the first Terror Tales of the park? Hey, let's have a whole episode dedicated to it. What could possibly go wrong? 
Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, and High Five Ghost are forced to fill up the crash pit. After doing one last ride, they end up accidentally leaving the camera in the car. So now they have to go down the crash pit and get it back before Benson fills up the hole. I will admit, it's pretty interesting to see what it's like down there. And it's revealed that there are these gross creatures that have been down there for so long. But I just think it's pretty stale. But I will admit, it does have funnier moments than the last episode. That's for sure. <laughs> Mordecai and Rigby switch the clocks back three hours as a way to get back at Benson for scolding them for missing the meeting. But after doing that, they end up changing the park's time zone. I thought the song was pretty nice, and I thought the final act was pretty cool, but it's decent. How ironic is it that Benson usually is the one that tells Mordecai and Rigby not to get into trouble, and here he is inadvertently getting into trouble himself. Benson ends up snooping into Mailer's personal belongings, and he takes this guitar. And when he breaks it, Mordecai and Rigby decide to help him go to the artist and get a new one. This episode subverted my expectations because at first I thought they were going to go to the singer, get the guitar, and leave. That would be a one and done. But no! The artist ends up dying, right there on the spot. So now Mordecai, Benson, and Rigby have to go down to the underworld in order to talk to him. I gotta say though, this episode was really entertaining, and it wasn't mediocre like the other episodes. Even though I thought the ending was a direct ripoff of Limousine Lunchtime. Easily one of the greatest episodes in the entire series. For this episode, we finally learn the entire backstory of Skips. We learn that he used to be a high school delinquent, jumping from school to school to school until eventually he gets settled down in this new school. And he ends up meeting characters like Gary, the Guardians, Clark Bang, and his high school sweetheart, Mona. Sure, the story is really predictable with the whole romance angle, as Skips promises not to fight Clark Bang, even though his friends constantly keep proposing the idea. But I don't care, because I've been interested in Skips' backstory for so long, and this episode did not disappoint. This episode was so goddamn great, I ended up crying at the end. What can I say, it's easily one of the best regular show episodes of all time. Feel better now? Eileen, what the fuck? Mordecai and the Rigby's aren't a band. Two guys who can barely play guitar isn't a band. That didn't stop you from clapping in that episode. Mordecai and Rigby bring back the band, Mordecai and the Rigby's, just so they can enter in this contest so that they can win this free air conditioner. But problems start to arise when Benson starts to take things a little too seriously. Sure, it's your typical band episode, but I actually really enjoyed this one, even if it is predictable. Because I just love seeing these characters work together, play off each other, and team up. It's entertaining to see. And we even get a nice musical number at the end. And this is another instance where the animation really looks good. So yeah, I think this episode is really great. Even if the ending is a little bit of a ripoff of that Family Guy episode, Deep Throat. I don't even need instruments! One, two, three! Mordecai and Rigby mess up Benson's painting for his ceremony, so it's up to Mordecai to paint a new one. I like the outcome, but eh. Eileen needs to make a music video in order to pass her class. Honestly, it's a pretty weak episode, and that's a shame considering the fact that this is the very first Eileen-centered episode. 
And I feel like they could do so much better than this. It's a shame. Because of autocorrect, Mordecai sends a message to CJ saying that he likes her high. Now, what does this remind you of? Yeah, butt dial. Look, regular show, I love you with all my heart, but you're not slick. Maybe if this was the first time I was doing something like this, then you guys could get away with it. But given the fact that I've done this four times, you included, I can spot this shit pretty easily. <laughs> but with that in mind, this episode's pretty funny. So yeah, this episode has some pretty funny jokes. And I feel bad for these guys because they constantly keep getting ditched. We had to move on after you didn't call. Uh, that's alright. Enough reminiscing! Nah, that... <laughs> Nah, nah, that's pretty sad though. <laughs> As for the episode itself, it's a reskin, but at least it has some good jokes. And it has a nice message about moving on, and more importantly, not pulling a Mordecai. We're dealing with another babysitting episode. Wonderful! Okay, the first time they did this was back in Season 3. So they decide to do it again, and the plot goes as what you would expect. Mordecai and CJ babysit Thomas. Yeah? Dude, I need you to do me a huge favor and babysit Thomas tonight. Isn't he like in college? Not that Thomas, death's Thomas. He acts like a little baby, bitches and moans here and there, blah blah blah. What do you want me to say? It's just a reskin of that episode. But the only real difference is, instead of focusing on Mordecai, Rigby, and Muscle Man, we're focusing on Mordecai and CJ. There are some pretty nice moments here and there. It's just a shame that it had to be in an episode like this. Rigby ends up being embarrassed on national television, so he tries his best to find the guy that interviewed him so that he can prove that he's an expert. And in a surprising turn of events, the person that ends up helping him is Benson. I too was humiliated on national television. And I like this episode a lot because we see Benson really stick his neck out to help Rigby, even though the two don't say eye to eye most of the time. And also I want to note that everybody is very dismissive and they don't want to help Rigby despite the fact that this guy has helped them with their problems a countless amount of times. Hell, even Mordecai is out of character in this episode, but the rest of the episode is pretty good, so I can't judge it too harshly. Pops wants to be one with nature, so he decides to start surfing, but then he ends up getting bullied by the surfing group, so this encourages him to keep pushing himself. It reminds me of the Guy's Night episode. The only real difference is that Pops just wants to be one with nature, and that's it. Middle of the road, moving on. Benson has apparently showed up to work 1,000 times, and if he makes it tomorrow, he's gonna get a gold watch. But in traditional regular show fashion, Mordecai and Rigby end up messing it up for him. So eventually, this leads to three and two other guys that were celebrating 1,000 for some reason, I forgot, end up getting arrested by this sheriff. It reminded me of that Family Guy episode where Peter and the guys got wrongfully arrested. The only real difference is, is that they add time travel at the very end of the episode. But out of the two, I prefer this one over Family Guys. I want you to bear in mind that he gets so pissed off when the house is covered in pizza pouches, yet he doesn't seem to care when they literally fuck up the paint that's on the house. Like seriously, he talks in a pretty calm demeanor. Play the clips. Oh, hey Benson. Uh, did you put pizza all over this house? Don't deny it, I saw you. I saw you put pizza all over this house. Sorry Benson, we know. Yeah, we'll repaint some of the messed up parts. That's not good enough. You have to repaint the whole thing or the paint won't match. Okay, so Rigby, yeah, I'm not saying Mordecai because Rigby messed this up, is forced to paint the entire house by himself. But Rigby, being Rigby, decides to hire some professionals, and as a result, they end up making the whole house stealth. Honestly, it just reminds me of episodes where Rigby doesn't want to do something simple, and as a result, he just makes the whole situation worse. What can I say? It's another Rigby's a dumbass episode, and it's one worth skipping.
Hey, look, a Karen. Get back here and take a number like everybody else. We didn't cut in line. This is the prepaid line. Oh, that's a fine excuse for a bunch of line cutters. Damn, regular show was ahead of their time. So because Karen was so pissed off that Mordecai and Rigby supposedly cut the line, she goes crazy and causes them to drop the cake that they placed on top of the golf cart for some reason. Like, seriously, it would have been so much easier if one of you guys just held it. And this is bad because that cake was for Maylard's birthday party, so now they have to make a new cake from scratch. This episode ends with Maylard having a heart attack because of some teleportation bullshit, and it turns out that that was the best surprise he's ever had. Funny. Skips is feeling kind of lonely, so he decides to get himself out there after 200 years. God damn. So Mordecai and Rigby decide to help him by setting him up on online dating, but after his profile gets a lot of traction, he ends up on a dating show. I will admit it's something different for Skips, but the whole game show aspect has been done before in numerous other episodes. But I will admit it's still watchable, so I can give it that. Oh yeah. I think we're gonna have to let Thomas go. That's a shame, but I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, the last thing this park needs is another worker standing around doing nothing all day. That's already Mordecai and Rigby's job, am I right? Yeah, <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, I remember the last time you tried to replace him. It did not end with good results. So after discovering that he's gonna get fired, Thomas decides to prove himself by getting the park statue back. I think this is a pretty solid Thomas episode. In all honesty, I was expecting it to be mediocre, especially compared to the last Thomas episode we got, but it's pretty goddamn good. And I didn't think it would be this good because Thomas has always been that kind of their character, but I think they did a good job with him in this episode. Pretty solid. You're telling me somebody put a wedding ring on that finger? God, she must be a desperate, 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 desperate creature. Anyway, Quips is getting married, so Skips and the rest of the guys decide to throw him a bachelor party. Skip. Mordecai and Rigby destroy CJ's expensive tent, so they try their best to get a part-time job in order to replace it. And then there's something about mud wrestling or whatever. Eh, it's a eh episode. It's better than the last one, if that makes it any better. Huh, so apparently Mordecai still has his dating profile. You know, couple corral from season 3. So Mordecai and CJ tried to plan the perfect day for each other, with the help of Rigby and Eileen of course. But things start to go bad for Mordecai as the CEO of Couple Corral tries to get him to break up with CJ just so he can get him on his website again. I gotta say, this episode is way better than I remember. It's pretty nice to see CJ and Mordecai going all out for this date, and it's pretty awesome that Rigby and Eileen are helping them along the way. So, I think this episode is pretty great, and I gotta say that CJ and Mordecai make a better couple anyway. I can't wait to see that Fucking love triangle take effect in season six. Oh boy! CJ wants to meet Mordecai's mother, and it turns out that Mordecai's mother is a total wing nut. <laughs> and guess what? She's voiced by Leela from Futurama. Kids. Sorry, I had to kick the door open. It was closed for some reason. That's because my bazooms don't put anyone's life in danger. I think this episode truly captures how embarrassing parents can be sometimes. But even when they're embarrassing, they still love you in their own little weird way. And I think the ending of the episode is pretty heartwarming, with Mordecai learning to accept his mother for who she is. So I think this episode is pretty relatable for anybody that has parents. An episode that shows us how High Five Ghost and Muscle Man met. 
I mean, I give this episode credit that it does give us an origin story of how these two met. It's pretty interesting, but not much to say. CJ begrudgingly enters a golf tournament, but the weight is placed on her shoulders when she has to go against her father. I like this episode, because much like the first one, it's pretty relatable for some kids and adults out there. Like having rough parents that constantly berate you for messing up even the slightest bit because they want to push you to be all you can be. And I like how this episode gives us a little flashback to CJ as a kid, as we see how her father was constantly rough on her for messing up at golf. So I think this episode's on par with the first one. Hey, Treehouse of Heart- Fuck. Yeah, six seasons in and I keep mixing them up. Anyway, yeah, another Halloween special. Let's jump in. Or we could go to bed early and be alone with our thoughts. The first segment is about the park crew shoving pops into a hole. Apparently, this is a retelling of classic literature. Yeah, I don't know. The second one focuses on Mordecai and Rigby's souls haunting the house, and the only way they can be gone once and for all is for Benson to fire them completely. And there's even a little twist in there, which reminds me of M. Night Shyamalan. And the third one focuses on Mordecai, Rigby, CJ, and Eileen getting sucked into a horror movie. And throughout the episode, the group finally meets Muscle Man's mother. I thought the second segment was pretty funny, the third one was pretty enjoyable, and the first one was pretty weak. But hey, at least we know what Muscle Man's mother looks like. This episode sucks. Muscle Man gives his friends his bucket list. Thinking he's gonna die, the park crew decide to go through every activity on his list to make him happy. But it turns out that this whole thing was a ploy for Muscle Man to propose to Starla. What can I say? It's not funny and it's pretty emotionally manipulative thinking that my boy was going to die only for him to lie to his friends. If he would have just told them that he was planning on proposing to Starla, I'm pretty sure they would have helped him. But for some reason, he decided to do this bullshit. Yeah, this episode sucks. Moving on. Wow, two shitty episodes back to back. But you know what? I'd rather watch the last episode over this one. So the episode starts with Mordecai constantly ditching work so that he can hang out with CJ, and therefore he leaves most of his responsibilities onto Rigby, who decides to do it for him because they're bros at the end of the day. When it comes down to the morning meeting, Benson wants Mordecai to help Rigby change the light bulbs, to which Rigby explains, Yeah, I can. I help all the time. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You see, I'm not gonna get on them because yeah, Rigby's a lazy bastard, it's been established since season 1, and most of the time he blows off his work just so he can slack off. But it's this part of the episode that pisses me off. Well, I mean, there was the time with the chairs, the limousine, the pretzel. You're basically the opposite of useful pretty much any time we do anything. So the whole time I've been covering for you and CJ? Well, I mean, it's the least you could do. I fucking hate this. But let me just get the synopsis out of the way. So as a result of this, Rigby ends up quitting his job and he decides to work with a company that lives with their back instead of their knees. So even while my boy's back is in constant pain, Mordecai says this shit. Look, I need you to cover for me again. CJ's half birthday is tomorrow and it's pretty important. What a selfish little <laughs> The only thing I kind of like in this episode is that Eileen is very supportive to Rigby all the way through. Even though she is very wrong with this statement. Ugh, Eileen, why'd you bring that guy here? Because you guys are friends, and you always support each other. He didn't support Rigby earlier in this episode, and instead he ridiculed him. You think the only thing I'm useful for is being your chump? Rigby, help me get a girlfriend. Let me borrow your time machine, Rigby. Rigby, I found a dumb sweater and I gotta return it. All you do is use me, man. But I never asked you to do those things. You know what? I'm not even gonna waste my breath. I'm just gonna let Alpha J take it from here. You think the only thing I'm useful for is being your chump? Rigby, help me get a girlfriend. Let me borrow your time machine, Rigby. Rigby, I found a dumb sweater and I gotta return it. All you do is use me, man. But I never asked you to do those things. Oh, so we're just gonna lie now. You're gonna lie to my face like that. You never asked Rigby to help you in any of those issues in your life? Roll the clip. Oh, CJ's here early. Hey, can you cover for me so we can go hang out? Sure, man. Cool. Dude, do me a solid and go out with Eileen so I can go on a date with Margaret. 
What? Why? Dude, come on. This is my chance to finally get with Margaret. <gasps> Wait, you mean you still have it? Oh, you mean the time machine you said was a scam and a waste of money? Well, yeah. Who sells a time machine for $15? It was on sale. So can I use it? You actually did and do ask Reby to do a lot of things for you. And guess what? With the sweater incident and laundry woes, he was actually trying to help you not regress into the simp that you are by letting someone else handle returning the sweater. So with genuine sincerity, I hate Mordecai in this episode. How can you enjoy the character that spends a great majority of it in his own head, pushing around someone for the sake of, well, it's always been like this. Thank you, Alpha J. I'll take it from here. What can I say, Mordecai is at his absolute worst in this episode, treating Rigby like shit and completely being oblivious to his feelings. Listen, Rigby may not be the greatest friend in the world, especially when you factor in the regular show movie, but there's always one thing that he's been to Mordecai and that's loyal. He's helped him all the way through, whether it's his relationship problems or personal meltdowns. And this episode pretty much shows that he doesn't give a shit about Rigby in any sense of the word. What can I say? This episode is terrible. Moving on. Eileen wins a flat screen TV, so Rigby decides to set it up for her, which is pretty nice of him. But it turns out that Eileen has this dickhead of a roommate that doesn't like it when you touch her stuff, despite the fact that she's living in Eileen's fucking house. So when Rigby switches the plugs, the crazy lunatic takes Eileen's TV and tries to chuck it off a bridge. The only reason I don't think this episode is bad is because it has a good ending, with the TV being installed, that crazy psycho moving out, and Eileen being happy. Yep, thank god everything goes back to normal. Looks like the usual holiday craziness, Phil. Oh fuck. After seeing Thomas fight a CIA agent last night, Rigby tries to expose him, but then eventually it's revealed that Thomas is a Russian spy named Nikolai, and it turns out that he's held this cover for three seasons. They even have additional footage from previous episodes to show him completing his mission behind the scenes, like the Christmas episode for example. No one suspects the intern. We are the lowest rung on the ladder. Your low expectations kept you blind to what was right in front of you. And honestly, this makes a lot of sense because Thomas has always been that kind of their character. So this twist absolutely works. Rebecca Sugar, take notes. I think this episode does an amazing job of pulling off a twist like this. And I feel like it does a good job of giving Thomas a proper send off. So yeah, I think this episode is pretty great, even if it's considered pro-American propaganda by Russian people. Also, I feel like I should bring this up, Audrey and Benson break up off screen. Yeah, e e even, even the characters didn't know that, so I I'm not the only one that's feeling confused here. The guys try to get revenge on Muscle Man for giving them a bunch of shitty gifts over the course of many Christmases. It's an automatic fan favorite of mine, and the ending is freaking hilarious, especially with the music playing in the background. It's freaking funny. Oh, wonderful. This is where the love triangle starts. Oh boy, I'm so excited. So Margaret's in town, so this leaves Mordecai to pull up Mordecai, instead of telling her that he's with CJ. He just does this. Dude, why'd you do that? Because you're acting like a dumb baby! Thanks, I couldn't have said it better myself. Honestly, they didn't need to do this whole love triangle crap, because in media, love triangles never work. And this is another case where it just doesn't work. I will admit that the middle half of the episode is actually pretty fine, with CJ being understanding and all. But then we get to the end portion of the episode, where Mordecai kisses Margaret, and as a result of this, it puts a crack in his and CJ's relationship. Ooh, boy. Honestly, that's just the whole purpose of this episode, to make a love triangle between CJ, Mordecai, and Margaret. Skip. Mordecai tries to hook back up with CJ. Moving on. Uh, 
Okay, this episode is pretty predictable. The gang thinks that Benson's being pranked by Gene, so they go out of their way to try and protect him, and he's pretty ungrateful in return. I thought this episode was going to be terrible, but it does have a decent ending. That's it. Moving on. Mordecai and Rigby get shipped to Australia. There's some pretty nice animation moments in this episode. I thought it was fine. Muscle Man and Starla participate in a game show to try and win their dream wedding. God, how many times have they done this? The only thing that made me laugh in this episode was that the people that they were competing against were from Canada. But aside from that, this episode is below average. I like turtles. Eileen, CJ, Mordecai, and Rigby hang out to go see the hatching of turtles. And while that's going on, CJ is trying to get over her hatred for Margaret. Well, for Eileen's sake. And then it turns out that these people are using these turtles to make themselves look younger. It's a way better Eileen episode than the video one. That one was just, that, that one just sucked. And at least with this one, it ended with CJ calling Margaret so that she could help them out. And it seemed like they were actually getting over their beef with each other. I can't wait to see that get ruined. Awesome! A sequel to Format Wars, and this time they've got Benson on the team? Let's do it! Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, High Five Ghost, and Benson want to watch something on Laserdisc, but then they get hit with that prophecy again, and we get introduced to their fifth member, Benson, and we get a new threat, and that's DVD and Blu-ray. Hey, you guys might want to do cable boxes next. Oh wait. It's the same thing as the last one, but it's funnier and it's bigger. Mordecai and Rigby want some cake. Oh, hold the f- So they decide to compete in a contest that's trying to get rid of the old happy birthday song. This episode reminds me of free cake. The only real difference is, is that we have this guy that has a cake for a head. I, I, <sighs> this, this, this show never fails to surprise me. I thought it was a decent episode. Not as awesome as the last one though. Benson gets a suit that was designed for battle. As expected, the same bad people locate the suit and try to take it away from Benson. I thought the fighting at the end was pretty cool. And the goodbye that Benson gives to the suit before he destroys it is pretty sad. It's better than the last episode, that's for sure. A Tenari 3500 console? <laughs> Atari, nice. Tim and Mark's golden badge secret adventure. Oh, you fucking bastards took the name. I don't care. I'll use it for my cartoon anyway. This whole episode serves as a homage to this movie, The Goonies. With Mordecai and Rigby following the map on this TV, they go through a bunch of life-threatening situations just to get a bunch of jackets. I, you, you, oh my god. At least with The Goonies, they had gold. These guys, these, these guys just get jackets. And while they're doing that, Benson tries to track down the duo because they stole his car battery. I like how this whole time Benson just wanted to go on an adventure with Mordecai and Rigby. <laughs> that was pretty funny. This episode is awesome alone because it's a great homage to the Goonies. I give it a recommendation. The episode that serves as a major step backwards for CJ's character. Mordecai, Rigby, and Eileen get invited to a party hosted by Margaret's dad, Mr. Smith. But in typical fashion, Margaret ends up showing up and it makes Mordecai pull a Mordecai and hide in the bathroom. But with Rigby by his side, he's able to get out there. And we get a bunch of moments of Rigby constantly stopping Margaret from interacting with Mordecai. And then eventually, Mr. Smith decides to take his chopper into the sky with his wife, his daughter, and Mordecai for some reason. But I did like the moment where he says that he still considers Mordecai family even though Margaret and him aren't dating anymore. I did like that. But then... Oh, Jesus Christ. The second Mordecai and Margaret act civil, CJ shows up and it turns out to be a big misunderstanding. Jesus Christ. 
Like seriously, unlike the previous times where she's caught them in the act, it was understandable in those previous moments because Mordecai kissed Margaret and Mordecai asked Margaret to go to the movies with him even though he asked CJ. But here, they were literally just having a good time. No kissing, no hugs, no nothing. So it's just CJ throwing another hissy fit. But this situation is way worse because she almost killed Margaret's parents. So it just feels like a major step back for her character. Like, come on, regular show. You're above this. I would expect this kind of behavior from Family Guy. But regular show? Uh, moving on. Mordecai and Rigby help Party Horse get back to his planet so that he can pass his US history exam so that he can party whenever he wants. I empathize with him trying to pass his US history exam, but I don't know. This episode was just stale for me. Oh damn, they actually made a callback to that episode. But whatever, they still didn't make a whole episode dedicated to it. Moving on. So Maillard's closing the park down because of the little attendance it has, so they try their best to keep the park open, but when they can't, they eventually decide to make themselves some uniforms. And they look like that. And because of Muscle Man sharing it on the internet, everybody shows up to the park to make fun of them. Oh, what? Muscle Man? These people are just here to make fun of our uniforms because of your dumb picture. Whatever. Any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> Some YouTubers in a nutshell. The thing that made me laugh my ass off was the fact that Benson, Mordecai, and Rigby were wearing underwear despite the fact that those guys never wore clothes to begin with. And it turns out that the person that saved the park was Huge Head from Season 2. <laughs> uh, I like this episode. It's pretty goddamn good. <laughs> After Pops drives through the garage door because of Mordecai and Rigby, the two are forced to get a new one, with Pops tagging along. And hey, it's the night from the game episode and the excellent episode. Neat. I like the constant trials that the guys have to go through in order to get this door. Like seriously, if they have to go through this in order to get a garage door, just keep the busted one. <laughs> uh, a pretty entertaining episode. Mordecai, Rigby, and a bunch of baby ducks have to deal with corporate scumbags trying to make money off their likeness. It's a parody of anime, and as somebody who's watched Demon Slayer, My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, and so forth, I say this episode's pretty hilarious and beyond accurate. Seeing these guys bring the fight up to space just so they can avoid selling out is pretty funny. And it also does a good job of calling out corporations that sell out for the sake of getting money. They even make fun of the real life toys based on the show. <laughs> That's funny. It's an immediate fan favorite of mine. But have you ever considered video games? Sure, why not? Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a bad video game. The irony of that line. Because that game. Oh boy. Margaret tries to be on good terms with CJ by going on this double date with her, Mordecai, and this guy who pretends to be her boyfriend. But then it ends with the lie getting out, Margaret coming clean, CJ being pissed, they end up leaving, and Margaret is left alone and miserable. Damn, I feel really bad for you. Eh, screw the bitch, moving on. The Death Kwando Sensei needs a stomach transplant, so Mordecai, Rigby, and his intern have to go get him a stomach from the Death Kwando Hospital. It's a little weaker compared to its predecessors, but I still think it's pretty entertaining to watch, especially with the intern double crossing the Sensei at last minute. Mordecai and Rigby order a 10 foot long sandwich, so Benson, even though he said he would get the guys whatever they want, tells them that if they don't finish that sandwich, they'll be fired. I like this episode because it takes a concept and they actually do something with it. If this were done by shows like South Park or The Simpsons, they would have just reused old footage and call it a day. But this episode actually tells interesting stories with the duo. So I give you a thumbs up regular show, good job. 
You take a concept that would have been done lazily by other shows and you did something with it. Good job. It's Muscle Man's wedding day and everybody's getting ready. But then there's a side plot of Mordecai and CJ being awkward again. Oh boy. I like this callback to set up the chairs. That was pretty nice. The whole gist of the episode is that it's just Mordecai dumping CJ on the spot at Muscle Man's wedding. That's really all I got out of this episode. And you know what? I don't really care. Because ever since they introduced this whole love triangle, it's just been nothing but bitterness and pettiness. So I'm glad that they broke up. Let's only hope that Mordecai goes uphill from here. <laughs> Psych! I mean, the only thing I did like was how Rigby was giving Mordecai relationship advice. Crazy. The laziest character in the show has been in a relationship with Eileen for months on end and is now knowledgeable enough to give Mordecai relationship advice. The guy who's been in a total of two relationships at this point. Wow. I, I, wow. That has to be embarrassing. You might notice that season 6 only has 31 episodes instead of 40. That's because they were working on the regular show movie. Or regular show the movie. Or is it the regular movie? Whatever, same difference. So the plot for this movie is Mordecai, Rigby, and their friends Skips, Pops, Muscle Man, High Five Ghost, and Benson have to save the universe from Mordecai and Rigby's evil volleyball coach. And the way they do that is through time travel. Ah, oh, crap, this is a time travel movie. <sighs> okay, whatever. And the only way they can do this is to travel back to Mordecai and Rigby's high school years to stop them from building a time machine. Because the villain uses said time machine to invent this time NATO thing that ends up destroying periods of time. And while on the journey, Mordecai discovers a secret that Rigby's been hiding from him for a long time. And it's pretty serious. Much like the Spongebob movie, it does a good job of introducing us to the character, the humor, and the world. And although I usually have a problem with time travel movies, this one it's fine. It's interesting seeing younger versions of the characters. I mean, we've seen them in small doses, but we've never seen them on this big a scale. The movie has some pretty hilarious moments, they have numerous callbacks to the show, numerous cameos from the show, and it manages to have an even tone of hilarious moments and dark moments. And then eventually, in the movie, we find out the real reason why Mordecai went to junior college. And we find out Rigby's biggest lie that makes all of his other lies look like fucking nothing. It's revealed that Rigby forged Mordecai's rejection letter because he got rejected from College U. And he didn't like the idea of his best friend going to college without him. So this paints their friendship in a whole new light. And honestly, it makes their friendship even more toxic than Finn and Jake and Gumball and Darwin. In the few episodes I've seen of those shows, I've never seen moments where Finn and Jake or Gumball and Darwin would do something this horrid to each other. But then again, I might be wrong, specifically in Gumball's case. But that's a story for another day. And putting that aside, the moment where Rigby reads out his rejection letter in front of everyone is pretty brutal. And it's by far the greatest moment in the entire series. Because this is pretty relatable for some people out there. Even for me. Having your hopes set high to go to this college only for said college to tell you that you're not worth it can be pretty brutal and heartbreaking. Also, in a split moment, Mordecai's future self gets killed by Ross, yeah, I just remembered his name, before he tries to kill present-day Mordecai. And also, there's a split moment where Rigby almost commits suicide, which is pretty dark in its own right. My god, this is such a depressing movie. Eventually, it does end with the duo reuniting one last time to take out Ross, like they decapitate his head and Rigby smacks it clean off. What the fuck? <laughs> So overall, I think this movie is pretty good. Does it have its problems? Yeah, but I still find it to be a pretty fun time despite its approach to time travel. If you're a diehard regular show fan, I recommend you watch this at least once. Now, let's jump into Season 7.
After he gets dumped by CJ at Muscle Man's wedding, Mordecai ends up in Dumptown, USA. So this results in Rigby trying to get him back before he gets fired by Benson. I like the message of the episode, even if it is rather simplistic. And not to mention, yeah, they kind of did this already with Laundry Woes. We're still dealing with Mordecai getting dumped, and as a result, he ends up being depressed, and it's up to Rigby to cheer him up. But at the same time, I've seen worse episodes. This isn't really the worst of the worst I've seen. This one was just fine. Benson doesn't get this award for Park Manager of the Year, so as a result, this leaves him severely depressed, so the guys decide to cheer him up. I love this episode because we see the park crew trying to cheer Benson up after he's in a rut. And after Gene takes the trophy back that Rigby stole from him, Mordecai and the rest of the park crew make one entirely out of newspapers. And honestly, that was pretty heartwarming. It reminds me of the episode where the park crew get Benson a world's best boss mug. So yeah, I think this episode's pretty fantastic. Rigby destroys a $1 million cake. The most expensive sheet cake in the world! <laughs> Rich people, am I right? So as a result, Maillard forces Benson or Rigby to write a letter of resignation, and they can't leave the office until one of them does the deed. And instead of doing that, they end up bonding with each other. I love this episode, an easy pick for one of the greatest episodes in the entire series. Seeing Benson and Rigby bond is pretty nice, and they actually do relate to each other on a deeper level. It reminded me of the Busted Up Cart episode, where Mordecai, Rigby, and Benson bond over the trip. And for this instance, they end up bonding over how tough their fathers can be towards them. Easy top 5 for one of the best episodes of all time. Wow, it took them seven years, but they finally managed to let Margaret have her own episode. And not just that, she takes the spotlight. No Mordecai and Rigby hogging the spotlight this time. And the episode's okay. Margaret tries to host a weekly segment on the local news, but it turns out that there's this Terminator-like character that's stopping her from doing that. Honestly, the whole Terminator thing really made me laugh. It's so freaking random and out of nowhere. <laughs> what the hell? So for a Margaret episode, I say it's pretty good. The government drops a dome onto the park. Benson starts to become paranoid because the dome was supposed to drop tomorrow instead of today. Meanwhile, everybody who was freaking out earlier just becomes content with the situation the next minute. Like, what is it with this flip-flopping bullshit? Like, if you were trapped under a dome for an entire month, I don't think you would care about getting jackets with your names on it. As for the special itself, I say it's alright, I guess. You have the gang that doesn't believe Benson at first, and you have High Five Ghost who takes on his leader for some reason. Like, I don't know why they did that. And you have Benson who ends up being Rambo in this special. And I will admit, him taking out the scientists was pretty cool. And the ending was pretty predictable, with Maillard coming out of nowhere saying that this whole thing was part of the plan. But as it stands, I think it's alright. But I will admit that the park crew is entirely out of character in this episode. Rigby wants to get Mordecai the best birthday gift ever, so he decides to make his own game. I will admit the video game portion of the episode was pretty cool and creative. And I thought this episode was pretty funny because it's revealed that Rigby's IQ is so low to the point that when they travel into his mind, it's filled with nothing but bugs. <laughs> Damn, he really is that stupid. But in this episode, it shows that his heart is in the right place. It's a pretty good episode. Mordecai and Rigby have Benson addicted to cat videos. And because of his addiction, some guy kidnaps Benson and has him act like a cat for the sake of viral internet videos. I mean, sure, it does remind me a lot of Party Repeat. But hey, I'll say this much. This makes for a better cat video than The Secret Life of Pets.
Shitty amnesia. Moving on. The weakest terror tales of the park by far. Instead of the characters telling the stories, it's told by this fortune-telling machine thingy-mabob. The first one's about Benson getting a dummy to force Mordecai and Rigby to get back to work, which is a shameless rehash of the drawing dummy from the first Terror Tales of the Park. The second one is about Pops becoming a werewolf. That's it. The third one is about High Five Ghosts getting trapped in an elevator. And the last one is about Mordecai and Rigby turning into chocolates which is a blatant rehash of the segment where Mordecai, Rigby, High Five Ghost, and Muscle Man get turned into pumpkins. They're not really as interesting as the last couple of installments. Party Horse comes back because he got dumped by his girlfriend. Skip. Mordecai and Rigby's sleep schedule is completely fucked. I know how you feel. Trust me. So they try their best to fix it. Sure, it kind of reminds me of the coffee ticket episode, or whatever the hell it's called. But for this episode, it focuses primarily on their sleep schedule, and how they keep staying up late at night, and then when it comes to their work, this happens. What are you doing? What time is it? Six o'clock! The sun's already down and you've raked no leaves! Eventually, they ride motorcycles in space. <laughs> what can I say? It's another funny and relatable episode. Don't you use the was that tonight excuse on me. I taught you that. Now look, if I gotta be here, you gotta be here. Don't worry. I'll talk about that later, I promise. While Rigby and Eileen go to Don's karate presentation, Mordecai has to hang out with Margaret all by himself. And he tries his damnedest to make sure that it doesn't get romantic between the two. Instead of Mordecai being cool, he just decides to pull a Mordecai. Again. But I actually do like the resolution at the end, with the two deciding to remain friends. Thank ever-loving God. No more romance for Mordecai. And if you're going to have two characters being in a romantic relationship, make sure it's Rigby and Eileen, please. Thank you. So yeah, I thought this episode would bomb, but it was pretty good. Benson adopts a pig that turns out to be a bank robber. I think the twist was pretty nice. And seeing Applesauce, hey, Benson named him, wanting to live with Benson instead of hanging out with his bank robber buddy, was actually a bittersweet moment. I think it's fine, but I prefer GTA 5 over this. Hey, Mordecai. Oh, uh, what? Do you think I'm dumb? Yes. Okay, yeah, I thought so. I was just checking. Rigby goes back to high school so that he can get his diploma for Eileen. But the biggest issue with that is that he has to lie to her because he doesn't want her to know that he didn't graduate from high school. I think it's pretty cool that Rigby is actually taking high school seriously this time around, and he's actually buckling down to studying. The thing I didn't like about the episode was the whole lying bit, as Eileen does the traditional running away from your problems instead of talking about it. Like, I don't know why they do this. But I will admit it does lead to a nice ending, with Rigby using his smarts on Crystal Rock so that he and Eileen can get out of the cave. And honestly, I think the pros in this episode outweigh the cons. It's pretty good. Benson goes to China so that he can teach English. I don't know why you would ditch the park on a whim like that, but whatever. And since Rigby needs a foreign language credit to pass, he goes with Benson to China. It's a pretty regular episode. Like, nothing's really off the wall in this episode compared to other episodes in the series. And that's the problem. Most regular show episodes are crazy and off the wall. And this one just didn't do it for me. Rigby tries to surprise Eileen. A pretty simple episode, sure, but I love the determination that Rigby gives off. Seeing him go this far to get not only Mordecai and Margaret involved, but these biker dudes as well. Like, he pulls this elaborate stunt just to surprise Eileen one time. 
It's a pretty nice, heartwarming episode. God, how many game show episodes have they done? Pops wants to be a part of his favorite game show, win that prize. But he ends up getting involved in the television industry. Honestly, it just reminds me of that episode where Mordecai and Rigby try to free their favorite TV star character, RGB2, from corporate scumbags. This is more of the same thing. It's calling out the television network. Hmm, I'm surprised Cartoon Network let this slide. It's fine, I guess. I like the twist at the end of the episode, but it's nothing extraordinary. Mordecai and Rigby plan on going snow tubing with Eileen and Margaret. But on their way there, Eileen keeps stalling every step of the trip because she's nervous. And then it's revealed that she went snow tubing before, and it resulted in her getting a scar on her arm. So Rigby decides to help her overcome that fear. And honestly, I think this is the best couple in the entire show. They're highly supportive of each other, and they always have each other's best interest at heart. And this is another episode that shows how great a couple they are. Benson enters a chili cook-off to compete with Jean. It's a pretty standard cooking episode. As I said in these later episodes of Regular Show, they don't do anything crazy. Like, part of what made Regular Show popular was how crazy and off the wall it could get. But these later episodes, they play it relatively safe, and I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, at least the episode ends with Benson winning. That's something, I guess. The VHS tape Donut Factory Holiday gets stuck in the VHS player, so the guys try to get it out and send it back to the video store to avoid getting a late fee. I mean, this episode reminds me of the best VHS in the world. The only difference here is that this episode has a lot of filler moments. Like Rigby having his hand stuck in the VHS player, going to Eileen for a bit, going to this guy that used to work for Mordecai's mom, and then we have this crazy psychopath at the end. But honestly, I would rather rewatch this episode over Best VHS in the World any day. Rigby's high school bully becomes a gym teacher substitute. And because he's a generic one-dimensional character, he starts picking on Rigby just cuz. It's a pretty generic episode. This is something I would see in an American Dad and Family Guy episode. The episode ends with Rigby overcoming his bully and getting the credit from his gym class. Moving on. Thomas, or Nikolai, comes to hang out with the guys before he leaves once and for all. It's a pretty awesome episode. Hey, they even have Pops join the group like they did last time. It's a pretty fun episode and it serves as a good send-off for Thomas. So long, Thomas. It was good having you on the show. After Mordecai and Rigby idiotically mess with Gary's synthesizer, he ends up fading from existence. Oh, why are we so dumb? So they go to this planet called Synthos to get him back. But there's a little bit of a twist with this one. It turns out that Gary's a wanted criminal on his home planet, because they have a certain way of doing music there. But then it turns out that Gary is the original king of Synthos, and the guy who's running it now is his brother. I gotta say, I really like the third act. The music, the animation, it's all outstanding. And I gotta say, the music in general is just so good to listen to. Listen. So yeah, this episode turned out to be way better than I expected. Rigby gets a brand new bed, and in a quick instant, he wants his trampoline back. The whole episode feels like a parody of The Wizard of Oz. Except it subverts expectations of the typical tropes that were used in that movie. It's okay. Muscle Man gets sick and tired of being used for his muscles at work. So he decides to get an office job to prove that he's smart. Ah, now I see it. It's a shameless rehash of the high score episode. Or because Mordecai and Rigby are sick and tired of not getting respect from people, they decide to be good at broken bones in order to get that respect. 
I mean, I do like how the guys that Muscle Man befriends at the office are basically humanoid versions of Mordecai, Rigby, and High Five Ghost. But the episode has an obvious twist of how Muscle Man was being used for his body anyway, and it turns out that the people he was working with were robots. It's an obvious rehash with a surprising twist. Mordecai and Rigby have to wait by Maillard's door in order to get a package for him. But instead of doing that, they end up slacking off. You calling us slackers? Did he? Did you? He's calling us slackers. A pretty basic episode. I guess the whole environment taking place in Maillard's house makes it kind of interesting. But not that much. Rigby needs a car for prom. So he has to ask his father. And for some reason, his father is a total fucking dick in this episode. Like, look. Would you two pipe down? I'm trying to polish my picture of my prized car! Seriously, remember in the Thanksgiving episode where he was actually nice to Rigby? Here, I'll play the clip. Come here, Rigby. Mom! Pop! It's so good to see you guys. <laughs> well, that's what families are for. Don't you use the was that tonight excuse on me. I taught you that. Now look, if I gotta be here, you gotta be here. Would you two pipe down? I'm trying to polish my picture of my prized car. So I don't know why they gave him the sudden character change. Maybe they thought it would be interesting, but no, it's just rather predictable. So after finding out that Rigby took his car because of his mother giving him the keys, he decides to track him down. And this is the part of the episode I don't really like. But seeing Eileen and Rigby have a good time, that's the part of the episode I really love. But the overaggressive dad thing just kind of adds a layer of predictability to this episode. The dome gets dropped onto the park. Again. Dome! And this time the scientist installs this button and the park crew members have to make sure that nobody presses it. It's just a big build up, 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 until they eventually realize that it's another test. And Benson doesn't call out Maillard like he did in the first episode of the season. So yeah, this episode ended up being a rehash of the first episode. With the dome being dropped, Benson acting out of character, the park crew acting out of character, the scientist guys being evil and they don't do anything about it, and overall it's just a big fat waste of time. This episode sucks, moving on. Mordecai and Rigby shred Muscle Man's shirt, so as a result they try to replace it. When that doesn't work, they decide to use some science gizmo crap and make a new one but they end up making a clone of Muscle Man out of yarn. I will admit that the yarn thing was pretty cool, but other than that, it's a pretty passable episode. We're doing medieval nonsense now? I mean, they did do fantasy RPGs in the third season, so I guess I shouldn't be that shocked. The park is setting up for a medieval festival, and everybody knows this except for Pops, and nobody can tell him because Benson set up this rule where you can't break character, and if you do, you get fired. It reminded me of that South Park episode Super Fun Time, where even in a hostage situation the workers couldn't break character because that was against the rules. It's enjoyable, I'll give it that. It's not really as infuriating as I thought it would be. It's a fine episode. Hey, this is the episode that reveals that Pops had powers at a young age. Hmm, I wonder if that'll come into play in the next season. We'll just have to wait and see. Pops has been looking at his favorite planet through a telescope for over these past couple of years. And today, instead of going at a hotel because the house is being tented because it has termites in it, he decides to camp with Mordecai and Rigby. I actually do like that we see Pops' childhood, much like Skips, High Five Ghost, Muscle Man, and Mordecai and Rigby. But I'm kind of disappointed that we don't really see much of his powers come into play in this episode. We only get like a little snippet. Maybe the next season. We'll just have to wait and see. And also, I like this little bit. Can't we reschedule? Sorry, Pops. There's no way to reschedule. 
Reschedule. Dang. Reschedule. There's no way to reschedule. It's like Sam Martin messed up his take, so they decided to throw it in there. <laughs> eh, that's funny. One more time. Can't we reschedule? Sorry, Pops. There's no way to reschedule. Reschedule. Dang. Reschedule. There's no way to reschedule. Benson finds a connection with a girl named Pam, who is one of the scientists at the park. So this whole episode is basically Benson simping over this girl. I will admit their interactions are kind of cute, but in a sense, this episode is rather basic. Dude, a shameless rehash of real real wrestling. With Mordecai and Rigby sneaking out of the house to go meet these band members they're familiar with. Even though they were on lockdown for 24 hours just because they used these dumb cards from the scientist. The only thing I liked about this episode was Benson snapping at Langer. Yeah, I just remembered his name. Other than that, this episode is a shameless recyclement of real real wrestling. There are two ways you can become a VIP, be an astronaut, or you gotta prove you're worthy. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but are y'all astronauts? Well, no. Thank God, don't do the astronaut episode again. Because lately, you guys have been doing a lot of recyclements. Mordecai, Rigby, High Five Ghost, and Muscle Man try to get VIP passes at Cheezers. The whole episode just revolves around them doing labor work until eventually they just reference Star Wars for some reason. And then it turns out that the whole story was made up by Rigby. One of the more entertaining episodes this season. What? Yep, they're just jumping right into it. So Mordecai and Rigby have to sneak into the dome's laboratory to get Benson's keys back. The third act was pretty entertaining, and at least it had some pretty funny moments in here. Overall, it's a pretty decent episode. Huh, an episode that was supposed to be pretty awesome, but it ended up being pretty decent. <sighs> Alright, let's jump in. For this episode, Rigby is getting ready for his graduation, but he has to do a speech on live television. This realistically makes him nervous, so he tries his best to get over his fear to do that speech. Now the episode itself could be good, if it wasn't for these major drawbacks that really ended up annoying me. For example, Mordecai's portrayal. For some reason, Mordecai is a fucking dick in this episode getting pissed off that everybody is celebrating Rigby's graduation and acting very dismissive to him for no real reason. Also, there's this stupid side plot of Benson trying to track down Pam. Honestly, I never cared about this ship tease. Moving on. And even if you take these elements out of the episode, it's pretty predictable. We all know Rigby's gonna give the speech anyway, so... What? And then eventually the episode ends with the park crew pressing the button together and then the whole park gets launched into space. Oh, and Eileen is a part of the group. So, with that in mind, we have officially reached the final season of Regular Show. Or, as its alternate title, Regular Show in Space. The crew is officially stuck in space, so they try to take it one day at a time while trying to find a signal so that they can contact Earth. There are a lot of questions in this episode, more specifically, how are the park crew able to hang out in the hangar if there's no oxygen there? Like, look, it doesn't take a genius to realize that there's no oxygen in that area. The climax is a little underwhelming, but I wouldn't call it unwatchable by any means. It's just pretty meh.
The park crew meet these robots who are overly friendly and apparently they want to help them get back to Earth. But Mordecai and Rigby are hesitant to trust them because of the last message they got from the previous episode, Trust No One. This episode shares similar problems with the Dome Experiment special, where you have one half of the cast that's acting in character and the other half of the cast that's acting out of character. Like seriously, everyone is so accepting of these robots and they don't even question why they're acting so nice. It just becomes a pretty predictable episode with these helpful characters that appear helpful and friendly and then eventually they turn on our heroes at the last minute. The park crew ends up entering the Spark Initiative, or the Space Tree. And for some reason, everyone is jazzed to be a part of it, everyone except Benson. Why can't Benson see that this is going to be really cool? So let me get this straight. The whole you guys wanting to go back to Earth, that, 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 that just means nothing now. Like, you guys are accepting of this whole crazy bullshit at once. I need to call my wife! How am I going to call my wife? Muscle Man, what about Starla? Starla would be proud. Besides, I know our love will stand the test of time. Wow, you guys are uncharacteristically out of character. So the whole episode is basically ridiculing Benson for not jumping on board, showing what would happen if he went back to Earth alone. I mean, I will admit that seeing what would happen to Benson if he returned back to Earth is pretty interesting without context, but with context, it's pretty shitty. Mordecai and Rigby help a gold digger get back her husband. Even though, realistically, she's just after the necklace that he took from her when he got eaten by a giant mutated plant. All this so they can get some space credits in order to get some hover boots. Why don't you just steal it off of High Five Ghost? He doesn't need it. He can already fly. And it's not like you guys don't steal shit from people anyway. I mean, previous episodes have shown you guys taking stuff from people without their permission. The episode itself is kind of creative with the whole mutated plant thingy but it's fairly generic. Mordecai and Rigby have to get Sure Shot's wallet from the Mantis planet. But to get that wallet, they have to eat a bunch of stuff that the Mantises eat. This eventually leads to Mordecai proposing to the Queen. Skip. Muscle Man is chosen to prank this galactic organization known as Bush. Heh. <laughs> I saw what they did there. It's a standard pranking episode. And the ending reminds me of the Rick and Morty episode, M. Night Shemel Aliens. Pops keeps having nightmares about this alien who wants to know where he lives. And each and every single time he keeps having these nightmares, he starts levitating things in his sleep. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So the park crew decides to go into Pops' dreams to take this guy out by themselves. I like how it's a parody of Nightmare on Elm Street, and we even get to see a parody of Scooby-Doo. And finally, I am so happy that they did something with Pops' levitation powers. We just had to wait, what, like seven episodes for them to do something with it? And we actually see a little bit of anti-Pops in this episode. Now, all we have to do is get through all the filler episodes, and we'll get to the good episodes. That guy jumped out of nowhere and trapped me in this miniature steel prison. Hey, Wallace Sean, How you doing? Mordecai and Rigby release an evil brain, so now they have to go and catch it. It's fine. Yeah, I don't really have much to say. It, it's, it's just, it's just fine. Pam breaks up with Benson. Ha! Called it! Wait. Never mind. So as a result, he tries to get some fries, but he ends up meeting a rock named Roxy. <sighs> I thought they were going to go with Roxanne for a second. What the fuck? <laughs> I think it's a pretty good Benson episode. Honestly, he processes his dumping way better than Mordecai. At least he's not in a deep spiral of depression. But then again... And it's not just that. We have this pretty <laughs> predictable part of the plot where a rock 
falls in love with a gumball machine. I have nothing to say. That 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 that's just funny to me. Rigby has to learn more about safety precautions. So he has this tree thing follow him around and he ends up being a big pain in the ass throughout the episode. And overall this episode reminds me of Muscle Mentor, but I will admit the final battle was pretty entertaining. And honestly, if I were to pick between these two episodes, I would pick this episode because at least with this episode, Rigby actually uses his head in the final climax, giving him some nice character development. Mordecai and Rigby end up on an ear planet. No, I am not fucking kidding. And they automatically get arrested for making too much noise. I like the fact that the villains come back just to shit on Mordecai and Rigby. That was pretty funny. It's decent. So wait, if Fistbum could travel all the way to the space tree ship, then why can't the people on Earth travel... Actually, never mind. Mordecai and Rigby take an elevator to see Fistbump, and shocker, it ends up getting stuck. I like this episode because we actually get a scene where Mordecai and Rigby take this moment to admit that they miss Earth, something they didn't feel in the second episode of the season. Because remember, in that episode, they were pretty excited to be on the space cruiser. So it's pretty nice to see them finally admit it. So I think this is a pretty good episode. It has a pretty nice ending of them making it to fist bump and actually witnessing it, unlike last time. Mordecai and Rigby prepare themselves for a space race. As simple as the plot may be, I had a pretty fun time with this one. I liked the training montage and the final race. Seriously, the design of this track is freaking insane. Especially when you factor in that this is all in space. <laughs> oh my god, this is a shit ton better than Cars 1 and 3. Also, I have a question. If this guy shattered from the vacuum of space, then why didn't Benson die in that episode? Fine, whatever. So Mordecai and Rigby have to avoid spoilers in order to see the series finale of Laser Hunters. And after Benson discovers that they haven't done their job, which was vacuuming the house, he decides to spoil it for them. It's a pretty relatable and beyond hilarious episode. I really enjoyed this episode way more than any other episode in this season so far. And just when they were about to watch it, they got spoiled anyway. Oh, and also Benson gets spoiled for his favorite show, so it's a win-win. The park crew finally graduates from the space tree, and after picking up some chips from the store, Mordecai and Rigby come across Anti-Pops, and what do you know, Anti-Pops crashes the space tree in search of Pops, so the park crew has to get out of there without being detected. I like this episode because we actually get a chance to see how much of a threat Anti-Pops is. Hell, we even see him wipe away characters out of existence pretty easily. And I think this episode was pretty good in terms of action. Now, let's see what the rest of the season has in store. After getting out of Anti-Pops' range, it seems they've gotten away scot-free. But there's one place they sustain damage, and that skips his bed. My bed. Because of this, it encourages all of them to get new beds. So yeah, we're just seeing everybody look for possible new beds to get themselves. And while they're doing that, there's a bounty hunter that tries to look for Pops. I think this episode's pretty good, especially after the crazy chaotic shit we witnessed in the last episode. And not to mention, it has some pretty funny moments, like when they're trying to find the checkout aisle. And hey, I'll say this much, this episode is way better than any episode from pre-episode 15. No, that's stupid. Our name's Mordeby. Mordeby? No, it's Rigbakai. Mordeby. Rigbakai. Mordeby. Yeah, stop talking! Mordecai and Rigby fool around with these teleporters, but after they go into the teleporter together, they end up getting each other's butt, 
So now they need to get the keys off of Benson or else they're going to transform into each other. You know, genetics and all that crap. I had a pretty fun time with this one. And seeing these two change into each other was pretty entertaining. Although it was kind of messed up of Mordecai to call Rigby weak when he's in his position. But whatever, still a pretty good episode. The park crew goes to the next rendezvous point. They come across what looks like pilgrims, but it turns out that they were members of the space tree that went through a time vortex, and now they've regressed down to pilgrims. I will admit that the twist is pretty cool, but at the end of the episode, it's revealed they still have another rendezvous point to get to. Moving on. The Last Terror Tales of the Park. Hey, I said it right this time. And I think they went out with a bang with this one. The first segment focuses on a planet that makes your deepest fears come to life. Now, why does that sound familiar? The second focuses on Eileen and the crew going trick-or-treating in a vampire house. Now, this is female empowerment I'm down for. And the last segment is about an alien roommate that slowly kills each member of the cast. It's a pretty good special. Good job. You guys ended off on a good one. You have my applause. The scroll speaks of the strongest, most powerful trainer, Earl, who will teach you how to use your powers. Damn, this guy's been everywhere. He's the true hero here. To hell with Pops. I'm just kidding. Anyway, this episode focuses on Pops trying to find this tape so that he can have some of his questions answered. And they end up being guided by these three characters that end up getting killed in pretty brutal ways. Like, my god, even when there are moments where these characters could be rescued, they straight up die. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I also like this episode because we find out more about Pops' background, as well as Maylard's background too. And we discover from the tape that Pops was originally found at a meteor crash site. And he had this scroll with him that showed that he is the embodiment of pure good, and Anti-Pops is the embodiment of pure evil. And from there, Mailer decided to keep Pops and raise him as his own. And at the end of the episode, Pops is given a personal trainer that can help him get into shape, so that when it comes to the final battle with his brother, he is prepared. A pretty nice episode. It gives us some background information we needed to know, and it's a pretty entertaining episode all the way through. So after discovering his past, Pops is given a trainer from the last episode, and he's forced to go through immediate training. I like the little foreshadowing in this episode, when the trainer gives us a little sneak peek as to what will come in the final episode. And I also like that we see Huge Head. I mean, granted he's dead, but he's still there. It's another good episode that makes fun of montages. Another training montage episode? Sure, why not? This episode just goes full out on making fun of training montages. And I just realized that from this moment forward, it's not even Mordecai and Rigby that are the protagonists anymore. It's Pops, really. But they still get shoehorned into the plot. Mordecai and Rigby change the tune on the radio that Pops has been listening to when he trains because they're sick and tired of listening to it. So as a result, Pops keeps training so fast and so hard that his powers become uncontrollable. I love the animation in this one. What can I say? It's a pretty great episode. For this episode, they're taking the formula of Terror Tales of the Park and switching it into a Christmas special. I mean, they're very well aware of what they're doing. I mean, Benson even blindly states it. Eileen, he's talking about telling cool Christmas stories. Ho, ho, ho! Well, it's really more of a Halloween thing. So, you guys want to treat Christmas like it's Halloween, huh? Well, have I got a story for you. But I still thought it was a pretty enjoyable episode, even though it's just Terror Tales of the Park with the Christmas mask. The first story could have been an easy Terror Tales of the Park segment, but it was pretty enjoyable in its own right. The second one is focused on the park crew trying to stop this guy from singing the 12 Days of Christmas song. The third one is about Mordecai and Rigby trying to get Pops a gift from this mall, at least theoretically speaking. The third one is so crazy, and it's honestly the best one out of all of them. 
And as for the last segment, because of Benson getting pissed off that they're treating this like it's a Halloween special, the fourth one revolves around Krampus trying to kidnap Rigby because he's been a bad boy. Shit, wrong clip, sorry. But it does remind me of that American Dad Christmas episode though. I don't think it's on par with the last Christmas episode they've done, but it's right up there. It turns out that after all that training, Pops still doesn't want to fight with anti-Pops, and he tries his best to work it out with him, like he's Luke Skywalker in this universe. <laughs> it's funny because Mark Hamill's in this show, so uh... <laughs> And as expected, he tries to work it out with Anti-Pops, only for Anti-Pops to push him away and almost kill him on the spot. But luckily, the park crew comes to save him. And we witness Anti-Pops destroy an entire planet along with the trainer as well. Jesus, that's just dark. And you know what? I'm not even going to give my opinion. Let's just keep the momentum going. Let's just keep pushing forward. Holy shit. Okay, Planet Nielsen is basically a cable box. <laughs> oh my god, the fourth wall breaks are through the roof in this episode. So for this episode, the park crew goes to the Seer, who's basically the audience who's been watching regular show from seasons 1 to 8. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Seeing how the show started off so strong, up until it eventually started to dwindle and it no longer started to hit as hard as its earlier seasons did. You know, like every other TV show that ever existed. And we even get Blu-ray, HD, and streaming coming back in this episode. I think it really does do a good job of providing a good setup for what's to come with the next two episodes. Mordecai, Rigby, the park crew, and some additional friends decide to cheer Pops up because he's feeling down about the end of the universe and fighting off against his evil twin brother. You know, the usual. And honestly, if I'm being honest, this episode truly hurts to watch, especially since you've watched the last episode. Seeing all these characters have a wonderful time, it'll make you cry just like Pops because you've watched every single episode, every single season, every single minute of the day to watch these characters and it really does hurt to notice that all at once the show will come to an end and you'll have to say goodbye to them forever <sighs> now i'm starting to get a little emotional if i'm being honest i also like this episode because we get to see all the previous episodes we've watched as their memories get scanned into blu-ray but let's save that for the final episode a regular epic final battle after seven years <laughs> over 200 episodes <laughs> and a bazillion <laughs> the final regular show is here now finally the finale will answer all our questions will regular show go out with a bang dude the end is coming hang on Regular show finale, Monday, January 16th at 6. The first part of this three-parter is showing Lollyland, the planet where Pops came from. And we can see that there are still some remaining survivors from the last few battles. We even get to see what happened in those previous battles in the Hall of Tapestries. Meanwhile, Anti-Pops is trying to get to Lollyland. So after discovering that this has happened many times before, they decide to come up with a sneak attack for Anti-Pops. So when Anti-Pops shows up to the battle, Pops is still trying to reason with him, showing his good-hearted nature. Yeah, he truly is Luke Skywalker. Okay, check this out. So after this badass sneak attack, Anti-Pops is still standing. Holy sh... Okay, now on to the second part, and this is where the fight starts to kick in. And I gotta admit, the fight is pretty goddamn solid. We get to see the clash of Anti-Pops' aggressive nature against Pops' peaceful nature, which I think is pretty cool. But guess what? It's not just Anti-Pops and Pops we get to see fight. Streaming jumps into battle as well. 
We also get HD DVD, Blu-ray, The Baby Duck, Sure Shot and His Pals, Death, The Baby Guardians, Carter and Briggs, Party Horse of All People. Like, it's a big roster of people that are coming to fight. And hell, even the park crew and Mordecai and Rigby jump into battle. Up until Anti-Pops has had enough of the foreplay, and he just turns into Mecha Anti-Pops, and he starts erasing all of Lollyland, and he successfully kills Muscle Man and High Five Ghost. You know who else goes really big to show their dominance, but is actually really small deep down? My mom. Oh, good one. After seeing that, Pops turns into Mecha Pops as well, and he tries his best to save everybody, but this results in Anti-Pops wiping out every single character outside of Mordecai and Rigby. God, he had no gauntlet, he just had pure, raw strength. My god. Seeing that Anti-Pops and Pops' fists are almost getting closer, Mordecai decides to fly the ship that he and Rigby are riding in in between them, and then this happens. And no, I'm not circling back to the first episode. This is what literally happens. So, yeah. The duo are back to the first episode. Rigby remembers pretty quickly, unlike Mordecai, so he shows him the Blu-ray box set of all of their lives, and it automatically gets him to remember like that. After they see that their comrades are still missing, they decide to go back to the present to help out Pops by using the power. We see Pops and Anti-Pops are still fighting, and Mordecai and Rigby finally manage to get back. And we start to see reality unravel pretty quickly, going as far as showing post-it notes, the storyboard, and even the show's title card. But eventually, we get the powerful ending of Pop saving Mordecai and Rigby, and grabbing onto his twin brother, and sending them both into the sun. And god damn the animation in this part is so good. And not to mention the emotion is through the goddamn roof. Now, we're at the end portion. The park crew comes back to Earth, and we get a short montage of everyone growing up with their loved ones, with the song Heroes by David Bowie playing in the background. Eventually, we see everyone come together for the 25th reunion, and we see Mordecai and Rigby reflecting on how much has changed. Yeah, I wish Pops could have been here to see this. Well, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have this. Yeah. Hey, do you think those old video games are still in the shed? Yeah, we should check it out for old cart's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I can't believe we used to do that. God damn. What do you want me to say? It's a powerful ending, and it's beyond the greatest way to end this series. Through all the show's ups and downs, it's nice to see that it ended on a solid note. Well, that's it. I mean, the only thing left to talk about is the shorts that the show did. I'll speed run through it. Mordecai and Rigby make a cool ringtone. That goddamn song was stuck in my head for as long as I can remember. Mordecai, Rigby, and Benson rap about every single country. They kind of took that idea from Yakko, but whatever. Pops goes across the country. I feel like crying now. Mordecai and Rigby start oh ing around the world. Honestly, it's the funniest one out of these shorts. Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, and High Five Ghost want to take a break, so Benson starts breakdancing. Okay, never mind, this is another good one. Mordecai and Rigby try sneaking out of the house wearing these dumbass ninja costumes. I can personally relate to this short, considering I used to sneak around my house at night when I was supposed to be in bed. 
Mordecai and Rigby imitate movie trailer voices. Sorry guys, but leave it to the YouTubers. We do it better. Mordecai and Rigby pretend to be sick. Another one I can relate to. And you can too. Come on, I'm pretty sure you figged being sick just so you could avoid going to school. It can't just be me. Mordecai and Rigby try cooking a pizza pouch while skydiving. Easily one of the best ones out of the shorts. Mordecai and Rigby imitate the style of Wes Anderson. Hey, they do a better job than Family Guy could ever do. The guys go to sleep in zero gravity. Hey, I want to try that. The guys get stuck through a loop. I mean seriously, who would want to watch something that goes on loop all day, am I right? I mean seriously, who would want to watch something that goes on loop all day, am I right? I mean seriously, who would want to watch something that goes on loop all day, am I right? I mean seriously, who would want to watch something that goes on loop all day, am I right? I mean seriously, who would want to watch something that goes on loop all day, am I right? Mordecai and Rigby participate in a robot rap battle. Stupidly enjoyable. Mordecai and Rigby ride a space worm. Eh, horses are better. God, really feels like the end of an era, even though it's only been like eight seasons. So that's it, I've officially ranked and watched every single episode of Regular Show. And yeah, I still love this series. The second I watched the first episode, I was immediately attached to the world, the characters, the humor, and the surreal adventures that these two get into. Dare I say, even more than Finn and Jake and Gumball and Darwin. And that's not to say that those shows are bad, I love them too, but I don't know man, Regular Show speaks to me a little bit more. Especially now that I'm a 20 year old adult. But like every other show before it, it had its ups and downs throughout its run. But I wouldn't say that its decrease in quality is as bad as Family Guy or The Simpsons. Because unlike those shows, regular show actually came to an end. They knew when they weren't needed anymore, and they decided to give a proper send off to all of these characters. No continuations, no spin-offs, no more movies, just one show with a perfect ending. And I think that's what made Regular Show live on as one of the greatest Cartoon Network shows of all time. Well, with that said, let's rank every single episode. I finally did it. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed watching every single episode of Regular Show. Although I seem tired, it's mainly because it's just a long editing process. But the episodes themselves are pretty good. And yeah, while the show did kinda dip in quality, I wouldn't say its decreasing quality is as bad as Family Guy. 
Because at least with regular show, I can still enjoy like the weaker episodes of the series. Even like the episodes I ranked harshly are still enjoyable to an extent. And I just want to say I'm deeply sorry that you guys had to wait so long because yeah, the editing process was a real pain in the ass. And also, I'm sorry I haven't been uploading for like, what, about four weeks now? It's because I wanted to get this video done before working on any other projects. So, uh, yeah, I'm deeply sorry you guys had to wait this long. So, yeah, that's my overall thoughts on Regular Show. Um, what do you guys think? Do you like Regular Show or Adventure Time or Gumball? What's your experience with Regular Show? Uh, what are your favorite episodes and what are your least favorite episodes? Tell me in the comment section below. And, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.